Good evening, everybody. Let's call this meeting to order. It is June 21st. Thank you, everybody, for engaging with us and coming to our school board meeting. Uh, we, I want to start uh, today first by you know, celebrating uh, that we have had so many great events in this past couple of weeks at school. We raised the pride flag just not less than two weeks ago with the students. Uh, we had a retreat, the board and the staff had a retreat together. We uh, had to celebrate elementary school graduations, which I'm sure a lot of you participated and they were really sweet. Uh, we participated in the Career Center Award Ceremony for some of our kids. And, uh, and we had the great graduation at U32. We have so much to celebrate, uh, all of us here tonight. Uh, and we also, uh, the, the staff uh, had the day off in Juneteenth, which is also a really great uh, for all of us to acknowledge uh, Juneteenth. And I wanted to start today by, you know, asking everybody to just like breathe. Uh, you know, let's uh, try to breathe together and because the energy in the room is going to impact how we treat each other and how we make decisions in the moment today. So, you know, breathing is something that we all do together. So let's try to breathe together and be uh, relaxed, be present. Uh, I know that uh, I've heard several comments through the week, and I know that a lot of people sometimes feel that the job of the chair is to, you know, to move through the agenda and to have a uh, a meeting and just get us there, right? And every time after a meeting, I try to reflect on, you know, what is it that is supposed to be my role or how can I do this better for all of us? And I always come back to the same uh, to the same question and it's what culture do I want to participate in? And when we got together as a administrative team, as the leadership team and the board, we were working on, you know, what governance culture do we all want to be in uh, together? So uh, I, we have done a lot of different things together, and I think uh, the ability of the board and our leadership team to handle complexity and to handle uh, different things, uh, is, it is because we can always imagine things together as a, as a board and look at the future. So I, I hope that today we can hold space for each other and find hope and courage and joy in the present and in the future for, for our kids. And, and I think we're all committed in this room together, including the, the public. Uh, we take really seriously how big the future is for our kids, how high the stakes are, and what future we want to build for the next generation. So with that said, uh, we have a great opportunity. This is our last meeting of the, of the before the next year starts. We have had a full new year with Megan. I also want to thank you today. For that and you know it's been another great year with the board we have grown and learned together so let's use all of that and with that i'll stop talking uh, we uh, welcome our guests today we're going to have public comments 15 minutes of public comments at the beginning uh, we are hoping that if you have comments from for the branding and the logo conversation we're going to do that further down in our meeting so that those comments can be uh, included in part of our decision process so if you're okay, if you're here for some other uh, public comment that you want to share with us, please go ahead and, and make it right now. We're going to try to hold people to the two minutes, depending on how many people we we have. Uh, other than that, we're going to move right into the, the agenda, unless anybody in the board has any agenda adjustments. We're good. Any public comments not related to the mascot? Okay, so with that, I would like to invite uh, our presentation and discussion on post-secondary outcomes. So, 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 so,
<laughs> yeah, so this uh, presentation would not be possible without the help of Lisa LaPlante and Stephen Dellinger Pate. So they're going to do a lot of the speaking. This is, uh, we did this presentation as part of the Ed Quality Committee meeting a few weeks ago. We took some feedback and adjusted it accordingly for the full board, and we've updated it because we now have more complete information around this year's class that just graduated. So Lisa's gonna kick it off. Next uh, slide, please, Mark. So this slide talks about the overall um, tier one curriculum that the student services at EVH provides. So um, it starts in seventh grade, which is not there with some flex time, but then mostly via um, next step in eighth grade. This past year, we saw a need that, um, that, that our students were needing some more skills and communication. Um, so I believe all of you have this presentation and there are links. So this link for overcoming obstacles gives you eight lessons that we did um, with the eighth graders in regards to communication. Then this is also where the students get to meet the high school counselors and myself and make a choice in regards to who they adopt. Um, so it lists for you the high school seminars that we offer. Um, again, the link to the Hope post high school planning guide um, that gives you all of the, in the students and families, all the information that they will need for figuring out what post high school planning looks like. Um, in, we'll talk a little bit later in regards to some, some testing with the 10th and 11th graders. While they are in testing, the 12th graders are in an in-school field trip um, that supports all the different paths beyond leaving high school. So there's interviewing skills, career exploration, resume writing, some financial help. The English department helps us with essay support, common applications. Um, and then the other bullets just talk about the other um, programs that we offer. Next slide, please. Um, we use a software called Naviance. There is a link there for the board members if they wish to at a later date look at the video. It's a fabulous software that provides um, many different options for students. We, in our seminars, have kids take the learning styles and the career interest inventories and the Achieve Works so that they can learn more about themselves and about careers and other um, options that are out there that might interest them. The Road Trip Nation videos are fabulous. A couple of college students a few years ago went out and interviewed over 3,000 people in different careers. Um, so they can actually watch videos to see where people came from, how they got there, what their uh, highlights and lowlights are in their careers. And then it also provides enrichment opportunities, college search information, and it's where we house all of our scholarships. Next slide, please. And then also in this program, we wanted to highlight um, early college, dual enrollment, um, the career center, um, and the military. So we every year have anywhere between 45 and 55 students attend the Central Vermont Career Center. Um, many of them receive many college credits through their program there. We also have students who attend early college in their senior year and many students who start using their dual enrollment vouchers. Next slide, please. So I'm going to talk through a bit of the post-secondary planning assessments that we administer. This is the list of assessments outside of VCAP and iReady, right? These are um, the ones that we do for post-secondary. So you can see that um, the assessments themselves, the grade levels that are tested, the subjects that are tested. Um, we universally administer the pre-ACT in grade 10 as part of our local comprehensive assessment plan and the PSAT as well is universally administered in 11th grade as Lisa talked uh, to you about. And then, um, and we fund those exams. We also fund the advanced placement exams. So we're going to do a much deeper dive in uh, advanced placement this fall during the, at one of the Ed Quality Committee meetings. The SAT or ACT are tests that um, students decide to, to take, and they pay for them, themsel them themselves. Next slide. So... We're going to go uh, rather quickly through this data. We just want to make sure that you have it and you don't yet have the slides. We'll make sure you have the slides. OK, yeah, we didn't send them. We just were putting uh, pictures from graduation in them, which you'll see shortly, just in the past uh, day or two. So um, can you enlarge that a little bit, you know, Mark, can you enlarge that screen a little bit so it's easier to read? 
and it's not possible. Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it, and then um, and then again, you can uh, we'll make sure those slides are posted for everybody. So pre ACT, you got data um, from this year, and then the next slide will be next year's data as well. Um, the the sophomores take this test, and um, math includes pre-algebra, algebra, and geometry. Science includes skills like interpretation, analysis, evaluation, reasoning, problem solving. So you can see that um, in this test, about 35% of our kids who took it um, in math were proficient um, on target, and in science, it was about 43%. Next slide. And then this is the same test, also science and math, um, the data from 2021, and the performance um, overall was not quite as high as it was in 2022. Excuse me. Next slide. So this is the um, English and reading data for the pre-ACT, and, um, and so the English includes stuff like grammar, punctuation, sentence structure and organization, um, some topic development and some style. Reading includes uh, reading comprehension, uh, stuff like main idea, purpose, and tone. And you can see again, the, the purple represents kids who are on target in the pre-ACT, and um, just as you've seen over time, uh, it, this mirrors our other data where our um, ELA English reading scores are higher than our math scores. Next slide. And this is the same test, English and reading, and this data is from 2021. Next slide. This is the PSAT data. And so um, the PSAT is the practice SAT, and it's scored between 320 and 1520. And Stephen's going to tell you a little bit about how teachers were using that data here at U32. And so we, um, the math department, the wonderful thing about the PSAT is we get to see exactly what the questions are, and we get to see the results from the kids um, on those pretty quickly after we get the tests back. So our math department sat down and looked through where were the kids doing well, where were they struggling, um, and started uh, going through and saying, okay, what are we missing some teaching opportunities for some of these problems? And um, if you're familiar with PSAT, it goes from easy to hard questions as well. Um, and so we can see uh, where the kids fall with that. It was a really good discussion in the math department about are we getting some of these things in front of the kids so that they can get practice with them, know the concepts, and be ready for the test. And we'll keep looking at that data each year when we get the PSAT data back. It's, it's very valuable for that. Thanks. Next slide, Mark. This is just for folks to have an overview of what the sections of the ACT test are um, and uh, and what that format is. I, I don't think we had, had this one in the last time for ed quality. So just so you have a sense of that test. And then next slide, we wanted to give to you um, the, the most recent data that we have around our SAT scores. Um, and that ERW is the um, is the English reading. Um, it's the evidence based reading and writing, and then math, and then our ACT score. So you can see that for the past two years, our students are scoring higher than the state average. This SNP actually came from our school profile, which is the official document. You'll see other SNPs from that later in this presentation. It's what uh, accompanies our students' uh, transcripts and other reports that go. Um, go to any post-secondary planning institution. So that SNP comes from there. And again, um, our students have had the experience in 10th grade of universally taking the PSAT and in 11th of the uh, pre, or vice versa, pre-ACT 10th grade, PSAT 11th grade. And, um, and then you can see our, their scores. Next slide. And then finally, this again is just a just a quick overview. It's really hard to read from here of just the um, percentage of kids who uh, score three or higher on the advanced placement exams. Um, those numbers, a number of students take more than one AP exam each year. And um, and again, we'll do a deeper dive into advanced placement and how that plays out uh, in our system and proficiency-based systems, how those scores are used, all of those things 
uh, later this fall. Next slide. Um, is there a reason why there was a spike in the number of AP students last year? This seemed fairly consistent. They went up like 96, 94, then came back down. There was a large class. Today. Large class? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Stephen's going to talk through some of our graduation rate data. Yeah. So um, before we talk about the actual rate, we want to make sure that you understood how it was calculated. So the graduation rate, um, <laughs> the four year graduation rate, are every student who shows up here. Um, in the high school, um, with whatever their year of graduation is, that is our denominator. Uh, and uh, and so if a kid shows up here a month before um, their senior year, a month before graduation, they count towards our uh, total number. The kid who was here their freshman year um, may be left. We, we've lost contact sometimes with kids. Um, those kids still count unless they register in another school. Um, and so, um, so it's literally everybody who was here for four years, that four year time span, and did they graduate on that day? Um, or by the very first day of school the next year, right? So, um, so we also, though, calculate the five and six year graduation rates because those are reported as well. And this will help you when we talk about the rate, because one of the years we have a fairly low four-year graduation rate, but you'll see the six-year is not so bad, or I think just five-year is not so bad. So next slide. The next slide. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to uh, point out 2020-21, the four-year rate was 77.1%. Um, the Vermont four-year rate was actually lower in, you know, than it typically is as well. But if you look at our six-year rate, already we're up to 88.6% uh, um, with that group of kids. And so you can see we do a really good job, particularly our student services, of staying in touch with any student who does not complete high school within the four-year graduation time period to make sure that they have the supports and they have um, additional ways to get to graduation because there are multiple pathways to do that. So they can go through adult basic ed. There are other programs that are available. Some of them just simply finish with us, um, do the work that they um, had not completed yet to show proficiency. And so um, we, while we know that we have some low years, it certainly is um, something when you look over the six-year rate, we tend to do as well, if not better, than Vermont as a whole. And so we're pretty proud of that fact. I would. The only thing I would add to that too is that we have kids for whom we know uh, their plans are longer than four years because they have needs and and they have goals and objectives they're trying. To yeah, I, yeah, that uh, Jen's right on that, and I forgot to mention it. It's the um, so students who are part of our transition program don't technically graduate in four years, um, and um, there's but then they count against us in our graduation rate. But they're still here with us doing work, um, learning skills, um, and hopefully graduating within the six year time span. But they, there are a few who don't even complete it within the six year time span because they're continuing in our transition program until their, uh, uh, their 22nd birthday. Thank you. Yeah. You're going to talk to us. Oh. I got this one. All I right. I can do it. Um, so this is uh, so every year uh, student services does the um, a survey with students to see what are their plans for what's <laughs> high school. Um, and uh, Lisa actually won't let them get their cap and gown until they complete the survey. So we make sure that we get this data. Um, and you can see that the percent of kids uh, attending college has held pretty steady overall. Um, we do see like this year that it's a little bit lower, but the percent who are going into employment is up. That's where you see the change. Um, military, um, it fluctuates, but it's usually not more than that three and a half percent um, each year. Um, and then the, the year off is a gap year. Um, students reporting that they're going to do some kind of gap year program. And so, um, I mean, those numbers hold pretty steady. We do the self-reporting because we also have the clearinghouse data as well. And we, we, took, we, it out. we took it out. Um, that isn't always um, accurate either, but that's what gets reported for kids who uh, go off to college and say that they're willing to be reported to the clearinghouse data. And I will add that the 8.9% for the year off, many of them, it's they've been they've applied and been accepted to school. 
we work really hard with our students to tell if they want to take a year off to have them still, if they're planning on going to school, to still apply while they have our support. Mm -hmm. So many of them apply and then defer. So they'll say I'm taking a year off and then I'll be going too. Um, but it, it does report as a year off. Thanks. Thanks. Did it change? So this is the school profile that Jen talked about earlier. Um, it lists all the information about U32. Um, it's sent to all of the post-secondary institutions. It's also sent with um, transcripts with to students if students transfer. So it does list the SAT information that you have. Um, on the bottom right hand side, you can see part of a, a pie chart, um, which gives you the summary of the class. Um, we added the, that feature in when we moved to proficiencies to help um, colleges and institutions um, see sort of where students stand. Um, and it talks about the, you know, the different unique features of our school, like the TA system, branching, uh, branching out pilot. Um, and all of the co-curriculars and not the extracurricular extra piece of it. Yeah. So we ran this through, um, God, I don't know, 80 or 90 different college reps, three or four different times um, when we switched to the proficiency system along with our transcripts to make sure that they had all the information they needed to make sure that um, they understood our system. Next slide. Um, so in... Um, on part of the profile, we include the colleges that students were accepted to. So this is the list that um, last year's um, students were accepted to. Uh, I switched a number of years ago before actually even moving here. Instead of, instead of the colleges where kids were enrolling is to where they were accepted. Um, oftentimes students get accepted to schools and then for whatever reasons choose to go elsewhere, oftentimes financial. And I think it's a better representation of our um, academic system as to where students are actually accepted. So this is this year's. And then next slide, um, which is updated because we now have this from um, our current uh, graduates. It's a pretty impressive list every year. Our, our students um, get into really good uh, higher ed institutions. In that picture, like, I don't know, you can, for me, you can just see how much that student, uh, right, is um, the relationship they have with their TA. That's the TA that they're hugging on stage at graduation the other night. So, next slide. And then um, we talked a little bit, I think Floor talked a little bit about all of the ceremonies. Um, so the first link that's on there is a list to all of the scholarships and awards. It includes the college book awards, the key awards, all of the senior awards, um, the awards that U32 students were given at the Central Vermont Career Center. Um, and then uh, we're just going to move into the... Yeah, we're going to watch the video. We're going to watch the video. So I want to publicly thank Kirsten Keyes, who is one of the high school uh, counselors who worked with students... Um, this year and last year um, to have them make testimonials about their future plans. So, Mark, if we can play the video. Hello, oh, there's sound. Sound. Oh. Had to leave just a second. Just... We'll start it over, don't we? Yep. <laughs> Mark, is there any way to angle that slightly so people can see? Or? Sure. Tell me when we're fine. Keep going. We can, we can move. Mm -hmm. more about <laughs> <laughs> that. The board behind yeah. it is about yeah. to. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still figuring out which ones, but um, you know, 
research, investigation, education is my primary interest, and I wanted to go to a place where I could. Uh, Uh, my current plan is to go to Princeton University in the fall to study something in the biological or social sciences. Not sure what. I'm interested in a variety of different sciences. I'm still figuring out which ones, but uh, you know, research, investigation, education is my primary interest, and I wanted to go to a place where I could uh, explore that in an academic way. Uh, most most fully, looking to maybe be a, a professional researcher or professor after school. I enjoy research, I enjoy science uh, the most. I, the two great um, interests that I have right now that could potentially be a you know, career or life path are acting and research, and I think the stress of an acting career would ruin the experience of acting for me, so um, I'm quite excited about coming in for the research. I'm parent to my counselors for the actual college uh, admissions process itself, but from an academic perspective, which is what I've really needed to um, do everything I've needed to do to, to, to be at the level I think I need to be for a top research university. Um, I'm extremely grateful to our pilot director, our pilot program. I'm a full-time pilot student this year. I've been a half-time pilot student for the last two years. And the flexibility and guidance that I've had there to pursue my own course of study is what I attribute to my uh, success so far. Um, designing and managing your own course of study is a lot of work. It's a lot more demanding um, to do advanced coursework in an independent study than in a regular class because you don't have other people planning it out for you. It's, 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 you know, greater effort that you have to put in, but you get more out of it because the result can be, um, you can work more efficiently, it's more personalized to your experience. So managing that, setting my pace, uh, balancing the amount of work I do to keep moving forward and the amount of exploration I get to do, uh, is, it's very tricky to manage, but the uh, research experiences I've had, the experiments I've created, everything that I've done along the way has been a lot more sad. Investigation education is my primary interest, and I wanted to go to a place where I could uh, explore that in an academic way, uh, most, most fully. Looking Mark, to maybe be a Mark, you need to go back up to the next student, because this is repeating. After school. He was pretty I, much... Uh, yeah, so it yeah, goes to about, uh, about uh, 240, 245, I think, and let's see where we end up with. Sorry. He was, yeah, Jack was just about done. There you go. I'm trying to uh, get sound for the uh, online, but if we turn that on, then we get feedback, so just give me one more second to try to resolve that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure.
Mark, we can also just display it for the folks here physically, yeah. and we can post the video later. Folks right. on the screen can watch it later. All right. <laughs> The little things like how, you know, what works for me to set goals and deadlines and, and you know, what I'm motivated by and uh, lots of little steps about teaching myself things uh, which Pilot kind of forces you to figure that out about yourself. Um, but also, in a larger sense, I've had a lot more time, and, and not a lot more time, I've been quite busy, but uh, I've thought a lot about what I actually want out of life, and with the opportunity to explore a bit more, to figure out what it is in my work that feels satisfying to me, and what I want to keep pursuing, and what is not the kind of life I want to lead. current plan is to progress up the Domino's chain. So as of right now, I'm working as a ship manager, and uh, the main encouragement that I've had to progress through the chain is my bosses. They've they, like encouraged me, and they show me like that it, it can be enjoyable, although like, yeah, you get busy and everything, and stuff like that. Uh, it's hard work, but it pays off, and I've made great bonds with like my coworkers uh, and my managers over the last almost two years, so it's very beneficial. Uh, I decided to do this, um, like I said, because of my, my bosses. The like I've learned a very strong work ethic from working at Domino's, and um, I've just decided like I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Um, I already know just about everything to do inside the Domino store, so like I, I know how to run the place, I know how to close, and how to open, um, and I, I really like doing my job too. Uh, highlights and challenges would be uh, like how fast I've gotten at making food. I've gotten incredibly fast over the last like two years, so that's that was more like a challenge at first was learning how to be able to um, like make food and not over top or under top and like perfectly top and still go fast and keep up. Um, other challenge was like learning new tricks to help things go faster, go more smoothly. Um, another challenge might have been like making sure I don't miscount the till at the end of the night when I'm closing or making sure my prep's done in the morning when I open. Um, Main highlights would definitely be the bonds I've made with coworkers over the last two years, and not just one store, but at least three. Um, yeah, so that, that's that's a big part of the highlights and challenges. I've learned that I have a, like a pretty good, strong work ethic, and that I like working a lot because it keeps me occupied, it keeps me out of my house, gives me something to do rather, rather than sitting inside or something like that. Uh, we all love money, so obviously earning money is a big beneficial factor. Um, I don't think I really learned anything else about myself, just the fact that I like to work and I like my job a lot. My current plan is I am going to take at least a year off, hopefully two. Um, I've been starting a little armory business with uh, a few other friends who graduated last year. Um, hopefully going to make some money, build some experience, uh, and then go to uh, University of Maine or now for forestry. During COVID, I spent a lot of time inside uh, and realized that I really hated that and wanted to get outside more and slowly build a really, rebuild a really deep love that I had with the outdoors that I was, I had a child. Um, kind of rekindled it a little bit and realized that I, if I, I need to go on a career path where I can be outside. It's really good for my mental health and I'm really passionate about conservation. Um, and so I felt like I could make a difference and I have to be really interested in silviculture uh, and forestry and, um, tree and forest management. So I decided that um, forestry would be a good thing for me.
Um, a big one was my counselor, Nate. Uh, he really helped me out with realizing that, hey, taking a gap year is fine. It doesn't make you any less of a good candidate. Um, and he, also a lot of other people, including my parents, who never really put any pressure on me, that was like, you need to go to school, you need to get this degree, you need to do this, you need to make a lot of money, um, was really helpful. Um, Amy K in the pilot room has been super instrumental in making sure that I can learn what I need to learn. And I give me the opportunity to find out that I do really love being outside and um, being in the forest. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. A big highlight is just the ability to just kind of relax after high school. I don't need to go straight uh, into more school, which I'm really excited about. For me, the, one of the biggest driving factors was A, money, uh, and B, that I just needed a break. Um, it's a lot of school. School was never easy for me. One of the reasons I'm in the pilot program is I don't learn really well in a traditional sense. So it was kind of an uphill battle the whole time. So I'm excited to kind of relax that for a little while and go back to school when I'm excited. Um, but a challenge that is definitely like the anxiety that comes with not going right back into school. I mean, I'm not gonna. It's a little. It's a little weird. Um, it's not the traditional path, especially because once I leave school, I don't necessarily can't just go. Hey, I'm gonna go to Nate's office and get some college help. Um, so it is a little. There's a little bit of anxiety that comes with that, but other than that, it's been pretty easy and I've been supported by everyone here at school. It's been pretty awesome. So I'm doing the 2 plus 2 pathway. It's uh, CCB to UBM. Uh, so yeah, it's basically two years spent at CCB doing like the uh, basic classes you need out of the way and you keep up a certain GPA and then you transfer over from CCB to UVM afterwards, and then you continue specific classes to finish your degree. And I, already, I was not 100% on you know, college, and I was iffy on what I wanted to do, and I saw this as like an opportunity to save a bunch of money and get college going straight out of high school, which is what, you know, is the ideal situation for me, saving a bunch of money and getting my degree. Yeah, at first it was my dad, straight away he was like, oh, I would have 100% done this when I was younger, and then my mom jumped in too, and you know, every, really any teacher that I tell about, um, you know, my path for next year, they're like, that's really smart, you're gonna save a lot of money, so. Just like anyone around me really has like supported the uh, decision. So I'd say the highlights are just how easy it's been to contact like the CCB um, guys and the flexibility with the classes that I'll have for next year. Um, and it's, it has been pretty smooth. You know, I've been staying in contact with my counselor, Nate, um, and he's been giving me great information on it. So that's all been good highlights, but I'd say some like struggles would be just like figuring out, you know, what classes I need to be taking and um, which ones are gonna cross over well. Dual enrollment too, I've been doing that this year to get some stuff out of the way for next year and that's been tough at times to kind of, for it to be in the background, like after school, okay, now I gotta do my intro to psychology class, which I'm going to psychology. And um, that's been tough at times, but it's been a good challenge, so. I learned that if there's an opportunity that I can take that will, um, be an advantage for my future self, I'll take it. Um, and this is a great example, I'd say. It's gonna save me a bunch of money. It's going to be very flexible, and I can shape uh, like my classes for the way I want them to be. Um, it's gonna be a good challenge. Uh, yeah, so just taking a good opportunity for myself. That's the end of the video. It was great. Um, again, huge thanks to Kara Swing Keys in the school counseling department for putting that together for us and for our kids for being willing to be interviewed for that purpose. We have <coughs> one last slide, and Ursula's going to just talk us through uh, what this might mean for the school board.
Uh, is our sound back on for? Observation. Don't know why. Can you hear us now? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> okay. 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 Sorry. <laughs> All right. And then Mark, next, next slide is our last one. <laughs> there we go. So this is where. Ed Quality often talks about what the school board's role is going to be with learning these, um, this information. And so the monitoring of student learning outcomes, hopefully board members ask good questions. Um, but supporting student services, the exploration and support of flexible student opportunities. And we kind of do this, what else? So, that so this is like our presentation to the board on the post-secondary outcomes. Mm -hmm. And you get to ask us questions. <laughs> I guess yeah. neat questions. A lot of you were there. Questions. So if you have questions for Lisa or Stephen or me, we're happy to answer them. I'm also paying attention to the time. Yeah, so yeah. 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 We were hoping to be done with this part by 610. This would be an okay. and we have a full room, I think. If there's any clarifying questions for Stephen well, or yeah, I guess I would say if there's information you would like to see in next year's presentation or the next time it comes back around, feel free to email me. Thank you. Thank you for putting this together. Everybody coming out for our presentation. Don't go anywhere because you're going to love the next one. Okay, so let's move right into the report. of the board is Superintendent and Central Office report. You guys had a chance, or I'll let you do some highlights and yep. then maybe move into questions. Yeah, the, uh, the thing that I was going to highlight is just there's a, an update in here around strategic planning. Um, we're sort of coming to the end of the first phase, which is a really high level, what are the hopes and dreams that that information will then feed into some vision and core beliefs, drafts that will then come back to um, various community stakeholder uh, and different types of engagement for phase two that are really more targeted, specific focus group, more conversations. Um, and I would just highlight that we had a steering strategic planning steering committee meeting this week um, where we just talked about <clears throat> being really thoughtful about designing that next round of engagement so that we have a really full, um, you know, full and robust amount of input um, and also had a good conversation that I think this board will think about, particularly at the retreat around um, the board is a focus group in and of itself, for one thing. So how do we plan adequate time for that into the work plan? Um, but just in general, how do we engage the board in the strategic planning? So happy to answer questions or I don't know if Floor and Kari have anything to add around that piece. Um, also, I can answer questions on anything else in the court report too. Well, I'm just that I've seen people come in and I'm hoping that you're signing on your name and your email address because this is perfect for our focus groups. So this is great data for us to use. So please, uh, we're excited to to have you here. And it, I, don't, I don't really have anything to add on the strategic plan. It's like how hopeful we are that we're going to get more engagement. Just so you guys know, we had just 130 responses to our survey for strategic planning. So we're hoping that you know we can engage more people through our focus groups. Yeah, I want to reiterate that that um, the sense of that we did we've done a fair amount in phase one, but we need to do more. And I mm -hmm. think we're going to need to ask you for some specific help. Yeah. And that would be organizing focus groups, identifying who are experts in the goal areas that we're setting, um, and just generally getting a word out. Um, so we need to be, be specific with you, and I think yeah. we need your help. 
on phase two begins when? We're sort of in it, no. sort of. We're kind of in between. So the end of phase one is the analysis of the data, and that kicks off the engagement on the results. So we're in between phase one and two. And it kind of goes through the first couple of months of the school year. During those specific apps, it'd be cool to have somebody, like, if I'm hosting, like, people or whatever, like, somebody from the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Just to, <laughs> so I'm not out there hanging. You know. Yeah. Sure. Well, we even talked about, and, and I'm not getting ahead of what the board decides, because it's what you all decide, but um, we could use work plan time also to run a training about how to run a focus group so that you yeah. all get the same message, right? Like, we could bake that into our work plan, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? In the report? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Danny? Are the, are the steering committee meetings public? Uh, they're and not, pu yeah. Public and public for us to crash? Mm -hmm. I guess it's another question. We would be happy for you to crash. That's a good question. The, we can update the website with the dates. Mm -hmm. um, they're not a, like it's not a it's not like a, a meeting that needs to be publicly warned, yeah. but we certainly would be happy to publish the dates yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's good. I, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. And I think what makes the most sense is like how do we best the not waste your time, right? So how do we best focus on the the, the need is great. So how do we best use it to partner? In especially those focus groups to try to you be our messengers with the community, right? So how to engage the community rather than you know the the busy work, right? Because it's divided into different categories, right? So who facilitators, who are data analyzers, who are you know so. But yeah, we'll do better in communicating with you guys. But like Kari said, we're gonna need you. If there's no other questions, we're gonna move into the Central Vermont Career Center report. I, I was thinking that I was gonna skip it, but I don't wanna skip it. I um, apologize for people online because you again might not be able to hear it. Our report for the Central Vermont Career Center, again, it was gonna be a five minute video. And because we have a lot of community members, I think you guys would really appreciate uh, this. So we're gonna go ahead and I don't wanna skip it. Even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Mark, we can we move the screen again? Again, I apologize for the people online. And we can end it right at the five minute to Mark. Pardon? Five point twenty two. Yes. Thank you, Renaz. Yes. Yeah. We are. It needs to be a better option. Oh, no, 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 start at the beginning and then that fight. <laughs> Sound.
it's interesting the collaboration between programs. So we have obviously the students in electrical, but we also have people in building trades that are looking at how do we construct a, a mobile unit or a stationary unit and figuring out what's best, what's most useful. I'm Marty McMahon, I'm the literacy interventionist here at the Tech Center. My name is William Gilbert. I go to Spalding High School and I'm a part of the Builder Trades Tech class here at CBTCC. My role has essentially been the foreman or whatnot. I've been appointed to help with schedules and kind of like helping spread out work. We have an electrical student and we have two Builder Trades students here. The electrical guy has been wiring everything up to make sure that we have flow going through everything and it's properly working. My name is Bo Ferber and I'm in the electrical program at CBTCC, the Central Vermont Career Center. So the wiring that we're doing, we are going to try to connect the jack array that we have to a GFCI because it has to be weatherproof to be outside. Currently I'm working on sort of figuring out the best angles that the rays of the sun can hit on the panels. Now me and the other boat trace guy, we have been setting up the structure and the solar panels so that it can work properly. And we've made it where it can hinge so it can have the most sun exposure it can so that it can be as efficient as it can be. My name is Cooper Bernacci and I am from the Electrical Technology Program. other programs has been pretty good. I don't fully understand the purpose of some of the things that Building Trace has done, but we have different sort of codes and requirements that I have to follow, so I guess it's all a learning process for both of us. We're in different fields, so I think it'll turn out well. The collaboration part of all this has been a little bit difficult. We just have to go between teachers and different students to make sure that we all have a general understanding that's all the same. Another one of our challenges was when we first came together and talked about an idea, we got one set up to do it as we are now. We changed the design multiple times on them, so we had like meetings without them there, and we changed the design without them knowing. So what happened here? Why was it this morning? They wanted to do it where the solar panels hinge at the very top, but it's not its not an eight foot and eight foot like this. It's four foot, four foot, and they're right next to each other. So we tried doing that, but at the top, it would cause it to move up or whatnot too much, and it would start to kind of put too much pressure on stuff, so it couldn't do it. What we're trying to see is, was the jackery better to be plugged in to the building itself? Based on the data, we could say that eliminating the jackery, just being plugged in to the building, you had, in one hour, you had 7% increase on the fire battery. I think that the jackery, it charged it fast, or it had it, when it was taking a lot of time, it charged it more, mm -hmm. but as it being the battery, it goes from 100 to zero, rather than being into a wall that doesn't really have a run out of energy within certain limitations. But when you add a solar on, it seemed to help keep the keep the jacket charged a little bit more throughout it, but not 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 enough to make a huge difference. I'm curious why we have a three percent decrease when it was with the solar. So that leads me to believe even though it's showing that the solar panels are charging the jackery, I would say we don't have a charge of the jackery with the solar panels based on the data. For charging purely on the jackery, we had to stop in the middle because I couldn't keep on during it at some point. But it does go for an hour and 13 minutes, whereas with solar, it went for five minutes longer. But yes, it did have 3% less charge in the car. I, I could say that it was due to just uh, temperature and heat outside and losing efficiency because it, that was outside rather than being indoors in a cooler environment where the jackery also had to output its own, its own electricity to keep some cool. Yeah, that's a great point. And I also know some electric cars charge more efficiently on a lower percentage. When you get in the high, it's, you know, it's when you get in the higher percentages, it charges slower because it doesn't want to burn it up. 
We spent about three weeks working on it. Materials roughly cost around $3,483. The cost of labor would have been around 400, so if you add that all up, it would have been $3,883. We came up with a better design for the next time. The idea is to make it waterproof from the outdoor elements. I would like to see it become like a yearly project almost, because it's, it's interesting to, to go through and do, and especially if we can get different designs off of it. Thank you, Mark. So this was a this was a grant that the Career Center got through the agency of education, and all of the professors you were seeing there, Dimitri and, uh, and all of the building trades working together. Uh, the the problem was there's no and even can have them build one for for here too. There there's no charging station for the Career Center for electric cars. So that was the problem. They were trying to do something portable. They were going to try to use it for graduation, but then it started raining, so they couldn't use the unit to have. But it's a great, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great example of collaboration, of real life experience, finishing a project, and and also what happened in, you know, not just in the building trades, but in life, of you know having to work with each other and communicate, and we all have different expertise. So I I thought that. What better report from the career center for, to end the year than than the video? And Bo, who was highlighted there, one of the electric students, is one of her students, and he also got the award. I'm forgetting the name of the award, but the award of the students of so that best represent them. People looking at this guy, the best represent the spirit of the career center because he's always like the ambassador. He's taken every class, and I was really committed into. Um, okay. Having said that, let's move on into five. Thank you, everybody, for allowing us this time. I hope you enjoyed the video too. Let's move right into finance, and I'm looking for a motion to award the revenue anticipation note on page seven. Could I have some help? I move that the board approve the revenue anticipation note for an amount not to exceed three million three hundred and six thousand seven hundred and forty-five dollars. An investment bid with the Union Bank and authorize the board chair to sign the loan documents on behalf of the board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ursula. Thank you, Daniel. Any discussion, questions from board members? Hearing none, all those things. Just a oh, second, sorry. Suzanne. Suzanne is here. Suzanne, the, in the last column, that's estimated net profit minus the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Of the transaction, whatever it means. Yeah. yeah. And I also have uh, documents for you all to sign actually tonight, not just the chair, because Union Bank requires uh, a majority of the board. Um, that's a big pile. Union Bank, with Union Bank so. yeah. that we will send around with a pen after you take the action. Yeah, and yeah, there's a couple. We'll give you instructions. There's a couple of things in the folder. So, all those in favor of the motion, as read by Ursula, as second by Daniel, to signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Um, Moving to the next one, authorize the scope. The bid documents are on page eight for all the projects. I have a volunteer. And then we'll discuss. I'm just trying to move us along. I move the board authorize the use of capital reserve funds not to exceed $30,000 to develop the necessary scope, budget, and bid documents for the Doty Generator Project in fiscal year 2023 2024 and fiscal year 2024 2025 approved capital, pro capital improvement projects. Second. Thank you, Ursula. Thank you, Natasha. Any discussion, questions from board members? I know that was do kind of a mouthful. But... Do all of our other schools have generators? Yes. 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 All of our schools have generators. Yeah. Yeah. And the part that was missing for Romney is now being replaced. So all of them have working generators, oh, not just yeah. generators. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. It moves down to 5.1.3. Authorize superintendent to award bids for the wood chips. They have a motion. I move that the board award the bid to supply fuel for the wood chip boilers at WCUUSD for the fiscal year 23 24 to Cousineau, Cousineau Forest Products for $72 a ton. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, second. second. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion or questions? 
Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Hearing none, the aye have it. The motion carried. Okay, now we're going to be moving into our policy committee discussion. If Chris, I'm going to pass it to you and then I'll yeah. ask for a motion. So we have um, two policies up for consideration. Uh, thanks to the legislature. Uh, we have um, the uh, F3 is the fire and emergency preparedness drills policy, and we have uh, F4 access control and visitor management policies. Uh, we're somewhat under the gun because these have to be passed by August first of this year. Um, so we reached out to um, our council because we also have a ten day notice provision that we are not able to meet um, in order to fully pass them. So our council recommended that we. Uh, provisionally approve uh, the, the these policies at this meeting and then reapprove them when we meet again in August. And that seems like that would cover our basic. So um, I, I would welcome a motion to um, put F3 and F4 up for vote and discussion. So motion. I'll make, I'll make a motion to adopt. Yes. Adopt. Uh, Policies F3 and F4. Thank you, Wendy. A second? Second. <coughs> second. Yeah. Any comments or concerns? These policies came through pretty much as model policies. We made minor adjustments to um, F4, taking out what we didn't think we needed. <laughs> Given circumstances, uh, but other than that, uh, they are unchanged. So my question is on F four. What so did you change up? The, not that how you changed it, but what does it mean to say that all members of the district are responsible for the safety and security? Well, it was just kind of putting a more of an active, always so an active um, emphasis okay. on that as opposed to the passive, which is the sentence. Who, who are the Who are the members of the district? Um, silly question. Well, it's it's all of our community members, our staff members. Everyone has a role in ensuring that we're safe. So it's kind of like see it, do something, see it, say something. So it's kind of that emphasis on on school safety. Thank you. That's why we did it. I proposed it. We haven't done it yet. Yeah. On F three. Yeah. Um. Under administrative responsibilities, number five, we have the board shall be informed of any changes made to the plan after its review. It yep. has to be reviewed regularly. Will we be informed of the plan? Like, is that going to be part of the process that we get, like, a copy of the plan? Yes. In the initial plan? Yes. So that, okay. Yeah. I have to correct myself. We did make that change for right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Right. All so, those in favor, pissing it by, by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? F3 and F4 have been adopted. Uh, we uh, had the equity policy, but not for any action because we were ahead of We just actually, actually it is second reading. Oh, second reading. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We didn't make any changes to we it after it. last yes. month's conversation. So we have next up um, our district equity policy. Um, C29 uh, for adoption. Do um, I'll make a motion to um, adopt policy C29 direct district equity policy. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion other than what we've already had? I just wonder about is it wise to include language about the Humanity and Justice Coalition in this policy? Will it always be around? Right, that's more of a procedure. Uh, um, but, but it's an action. Um, good. In terms of the uh, humanity and justice policy, I can get an advisory capacity. Mm -hmm. That's why I think we wanted it there and know what the advice is, is and reporting. And Megan, go ahead. Well, I was just going to add one of the things we, we added to this policy is. is Especially right now, the idea that it's iterative and that yeah. we would likely review this one every year in the yeah. beginning okay. because well, it it's evolving. That yeah. So yeah. that might give us the opportunity yeah. to fix that because I think it's a good. I think it's a good question, and 
I think we've also written it in a way that says we'll catch that in our annual review, at least in the short term. Uh, to to a specific point, if the Humanity and Justice Coalition somehow ceased to be, there is no required action on, on their part. It is advisory. Yeah. That would just become you and yeah, nothing. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, well, thank you favor of adopting our equity policy uh, as moved by Lindy and second by Maggie. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, congratulations, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. You've been working on this for a while. So it's a big, <laughs> be very proud. Okay. And, <clears throat> Now let's move into board operations. Uh, we that was part of that little change on the agenda. Uh, we have the Berlin Nature Trails and Megan, you have yep. a chance to speak. To I ahead. can speak to that. Yeah. Um, so we were approached by um, one of the organizations working on the Berlin Town Center project, asking if the, the district, which really is the board, would um, sign a letter of support for future walking trails being developed between the town center and the school. Um, and you have a draft of what that letter could look like in the packet. Um, we did speak with our attorney and from his perspective, um, this is a general signal of support that he would be comfortable if the board so chooses to do that. Um, the point at which we would actually be talking about walking trails, there may need to be a discussion about whether or not that would require a vote, frankly. But that, that sh his perspective is that um, signing this letter supporting the concept of walking trails doesn't set you up for any future um, decision. In other words, you'd be able, once once they're at the point of actually building them, you'd be picking that discussion up again. So that's how toward it intends yes. to work. Right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Is there recommended action here? Yes, so the recommended action will be to authorize the chair to sign the letter. And uh, I was just going to ask, are we talking about our land or are we talking about the land we... Ah, good question. Originally this would be different entered? because this would be land that is ours that, that this walking trail would cross, which is why before anything <laughs> happened, we'd be back at it. This board would be discussing that and our attorney believes that may even at that point may require a vote of, of the towns. Of the towns um, of the town or the board. Uh, the towns potentially. That's what they. That's what he would be investigating. Well, rural towns. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Correct. Because it's district land. Right. Just like just like you needed a vote to um to, to, to transfer to, that to parcel. So this is a great question. This is a different because this is really just. Uh, and I should say, from the perspective of the Berlin principal and our facilities, it probably is advantageous for there to be a path between mm -hmm. a bunch of new housing right. and our yeah. elementary yeah. school. So the concept is certainly something that. So this is, this is coming to us because it crosses our power land of our, our something. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the only concern council believes that that use would be consistent with our agreement with the deed that we signed. Town of Berlin. Yes. That 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 use of, of walking trails. Yeah. Because yeah. this letter is being initiated by us, correct? Either town number one, or did they come? They come to us. They came to they us. Came to us. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's it's one of the organizations downstreet. Downstreet yeah. yeah. housing. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's one of them working with. Yeah. Um, uh, we make one change. Berlin Elementary School is located within okay. long distance. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. Do you want to make a motion, Jim? I move uh, to uh, authorize the board chair to sign this letter uh, with the uh, amendment to text. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Ursula. I just want to check with you. Lisa, you got that? Yes. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. I can hear you, Eric. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then we have the other. I can take this one too. Yeah. So the next item actually something that would normally be on the consent agenda, but it landed under board operations. So I figured I'll explain it. Every year we write the IDAB grant, which is special education federal funding. 
and there is a need to um, for the board to, uh, frankly, it's pro forma, authorize the board chair to sign the assurances packet. Um, so that packet was in your revised packet, and it is simply saying that that floor is authorized by the board to say that we will be compliant with federal law in using these funds. Um, so again, that's why it would normally be under consent agenda, but since it's here. So the motion would be to um, authorize the yeah, to sign it. I authorize the, I move to authorize the board chair to sign the idea of the local education agency plan assurances. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, that was a second by Chris. Thank you, Chris. Any other discussion or questions? Seeing none, uh, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. So we, uh, well, let's do this last part and then we'll pass it to folder. Let's move right into the consent agenda. And I'm looking for a motion to approve minutes. We move to approve minutes of May 24th, 2023. Second. Jonas, uh, Daniel, that was you. Any discussion, any revisions to the minutes? Seeing none, hey, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any abstentions? None, the motion carries. And now, Lindy, should I put you on the spot? Yeah, I've got the okay. I'm looking for a motion into approving our board orders. Um, I have a question about the, can they be done as a block of each section? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I make a motion to accept the new teacher nominations for 23 24. No, no, no. Yeah. A, a board order. Board order. Oh, board the board. Board. I don't have those. Oh, okay. So I, I was ready for the next one. You have the board. Right. Okay, cheers. Sorry. I didn't have my computer on. <laughs> Can I keep them to you? Is that okay? Yes. You're going to do two. Page. And then the speech. Let's Okay. I move that we approve the board orders. For June 1st, 2023 to June 21st, 2023, a total amount of $525,723.15. We'll say the number again for 525, $725,723.15. Can we do both? You want to do both? Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. And I move that we approve the orders for. May 18th through May 31st, in a total amount of 330,413.90. Thank you, Ursula. A second? Second. Thank you, Natasha. Or... Any questions? You guys had a chance to see them? Okay. There's no questions. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Eric, anybody suppose? Any abstentions? Seeing none, the board orders have been approved. So with that, I'm going to pass this folder. There's two, they're marked. And then there is the, the sign for the Berlin, uh, the Berlin action and the past anticipation. So please, uh, I'm just going to start it at the corner there. Stick right? the pen with it. Oh, yes, yeah, stick your pen. Yeah. And pass it down. <laughs> Thank you. So now, yes, Lindy, let's move into personnel. <laughs> um, I make a motion to accept the new teacher nominations for the 23-24 school year, which include Nathaniel Schwartz, Library Technology Integrationist at Calis, Lydia Fazy, Nurse at Doty, Michelle Lynch, part-time pre-K teacher at Romney, Christina Pollard, Interventionist at Doty. Thank you, Lindy. Second. Thank you, Ursula. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Okay. Oh, sorry, question. Sorry. Yeah. Um, it might be my fault. Um, I feel as if there might have been a couple staff changes at Callis that I think might have been announced at graduation or, um, or Maybe I can't remember if I just heard them through 
sort of Cal's community chatter, or was it, uh, uh, letter, maybe? this is all to say, I'm interested in knowing sort of all of the staff turnover, having some record of all of the staff turnover for the year made available to us. Is that something that could be put together without too much difficulty? Well, you have it in every month's update yes. because every resignation that occurs, so you'll get the ones, like this is the list that has happened between last board meeting and this board meeting. So, um, I mean, Melissa could create one list okay. based on all those, but if you want it in the moment, like more immediate, it's in it's in these packets in each one. But I can have Melissa pull and, together a list. No, that's fine. And, but if I didn't see something, who could I inquire about what whatever public information is available? Like if, if a community member asks me mm -hmm. a situation. I'd start with Kat or well, I'd start with the respective principal yeah. for sure. Because sometimes uh sometimes you haven't officially seen the resignation as a board. Sometimes uh Vermont's a small place. Sometimes things come out before they're intended to be public, but it's I think Starting with the principal is always safe. Okay. I'm happy to answer questions too. But thanks. Sorry, we're just trying to. No, that's okay. Okay. So Lindy moved. I second. Okay. You I seconded, it. Okay. and we're in discussion. Question? Yeah. So uh, if, so hold on. Wait a second. Get up. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go yeah, please. The board public. The. Jody intervention on position. Christina Pollard, the pre-K teacher, she. Is this an addition to the good question? Position or it's a point five position. So it she is it fits into her teacher level FTE. She Christina current position is partially early ed and partially DC community. So this would be an addition to her current pre K role. It would be an addition to her current pre K role. Therefore, letting go of her CC portion. I just wanted to say. Yeah. Chrissy was a board member briefly. He played a great shot at Cody. I just wanted to see how great that is. Um, and I, I have nothing but you know, respect and admiration for anyone. I wonder if the composition of the interview committee uh, was, was entirely, maybe there was someone else. <laughs> Are you talking about the new teachers? The uh, new position? No. Or staff? Wow. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Chris, Chris is on the interview. Listed as being on the interview. Oh, I didn't even think he had it. Well, with all those in favor of approving our new teacher nominations for the school year 23-24, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Any none? The motion carries. Uh, Lindy, new okay. principal. I make a motion to accept the new principal nomination for fiscal year 23 24 at Berlin Elementary, uh, <laughs> Celia Grumos. A second? Second. Thank you. Joshua? Any discussion? So I would Here. like to ask uh, Superintendent uh, just a Couple of questions. We, you know, we received some communication from some people, some staff at Berlin who were not happy with the decision that was made. So I just in open session want to ask the superintendent, do we have a procedure and a process for hiring, including for for principals? And was that process and that and those procedures followed correctly? Yes. I'm happy to describe the process if that would be helpful to the board. Yeah. Um so for principals, um I use an external search consultant. Um, so we contracted with Jay Nichols of the Vermont Principals Association. He facilitated the process. Um, the interview committee is convened. It had uh, faculty, support staff, district staff, community members, including parents. Um, we And that the charge of that committee is to support the interview process and provide input. Um, and they're charged with providing the superintendent two candidates. Um, there were five candidates selected for a first round interview. That is a pretty good number for this time of year. Um, we had a strong candidate pool. We ultimately interviewed four because one did withdraw. Um, two were moved forward to the second round. Um, there were community and school-based forums, and this is the nominee. Um, yep. What weight is giving to staff um, support for the, uh, the candidate? Yeah, I would yeah. say the, the pieces of input is the 
person's background experience, uh, um, the answers to the questions in both rounds of interviews, the forum reference checks, forums of both <laughs> faculty and staff. So I don't know that I, off the top of my head, would say any one. I, I don't know that I have percentages assigned to each. I take it all and sort of weigh it all based on all the information. Is it clear to the staff that the ultimate decision rests with the superintendent, or do they feel that it is somehow a more voting? I process? can't answer that question for the staff. I can tell you that the committee was very clear because that description of their charge was part of Jay's initial work mm -hmm. with them. Any other questions? Tell me. We made the motion. Sorry, I didn't. Miss oh, it. I did. Lindy, and Joshua, okay. second that. How many urban educators or staff were on the committee? Three. Two teachers, one support staff. Two parents. And just how many time? How many things were listed? It seemed like a lot of staff members were on that email. How many were on that? I, mean, yeah, okay. I don't know. I, I, I don't I know. Think I know. Whether it's three one or is it a good percentage? Do you have any sense of what percentage that is? Uh, I, I, that's a good question. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, hearing none. Other questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Same. You're abstaining. Okay. Yeah. One abstention. You get that, Lindy? Lindy, I mean, what's up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So the motion carries. Thank you, everybody, and welcome, Celia. We are very excited to have a new member of the leadership team, a retirement. I'm so sorry. It's, um, I, I, it's actually not. It's good for her. I make a motion to accept the retirement of Robin Gannon, uh, East Montpelier classroom teacher for over 40 years. <laughs> and it's uh, with great appreciation for her teaching. Second. Okay. Lindy and Daniel, and yeah, I had a little piece, but we we're already late, but exactly what you were saying. Robin Gannon has served our district for 40 years. A lot of you are familiar with. She's been really carried on the science part in a lot of her elementary schools, and not just, you know, Robin Gannon will be missing, but uh, Robin Rainbow will be missing from our science lessons. So thank you, Mrs. Gannon, for so many years of service. Okay, we don't have any rehires. Uh, what? Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I know All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, resignation. It's a long list. <laughs> I make a motion to accept the following resignations. Um, Karen Boynton, Principal at Berlin, Jeremy Avoli, PE Health at U32, Mary Bogue, English teacher, U32, Julie Marie Bristol, special ed teacher, Berlin and Callis, uh, Deanna Murray, pre K teacher, Rumney, Sandra Wetzel, special ed teacher, Berlin. Shannon Miller, classroom teacher, Berlin. Jake Plouffe, school counselor, U32. Thank you, Lindy. A second? Second. Thank you, Ursula. Any questions or discussion? None. Well, oh. I, I'm going to vote against one. So do I do that separately, or how do I do that? Because there's offered as a oh. Um, yeah. mm. So I know, just, you know, I just, just offer it a slate and then, and I'll, yeah, offer it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. All those, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Except any, for, for me. Any yeah. opposed? From Romney, uh, mm -hmm. uh, her resignation, I'm not accepting. Not that we can force her to stay, but um, <laughs> she's a just, wonderful asset for the Romney community, and uh, I don't want to see her go. So. Right. Uh, any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carried. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and then, uh, any uh, vacancy update? Or, uh, no more. So the there are um, there was some of these resignations prompted. We do have a couple of um, 
hires as a result of those resignations, particularly again in the area of special ed. Um, we also have a classroom teacher at Berlin. Um, so we are moving through the hiring process. Um, it, again, candidate pool has been better this year. Uh, we are late. These are now at this point likely positions that would be hired after July 1, um, which we had quite a bit of last year. Um, but we are moving candidates forward uh, pretty quickly. So the pool is the pool is still okay. <laughs> okay. So then so we can move into our next part of the agenda. Our our future agenda items is with specific reminders to everybody. We're having a retreat in August, August 8th. I know that that day can work with a couple of you, but we try to prioritize people that hadn't been to a retreat before. So we're looking forward to seeing you then. It's again at the Nature Center, and you'll get more information. We're not gonna so the board calendar right now, but we, as you know, we're going to try to uh, put in some of the strategic planning to the board calendar. We're going to be talking about the board calendar at our retreat. So we felt that we could skip that tonight and move into 11, our non-discriminatory mascot and branding. I was going to keep the board just like and the public, like five minutes. We've been sitting for a while to just quickly use the restroom and be back here at 705, does that work for everybody? Start your legs. Please make sure that you sign that form and share your email. Okay, are we ready? So, so we're we're gonna move into one of the last parts of our agenda and we're gonna talk about our non-discriminatory mascot and branding discussion that we've been having for the last few meetings. Uh, I voted to make a decision, a decision tonight because we have had new people join. And as we speak, people are joining the the waiting room, the waiting room, the, the meeting. And we have had people come in to the meeting and some of you missed sort of like the beginning. I'm not going to do the whole introduction. Don't worry, board members. Uh, but I just wanted to, you know, first, uh, we just, uh, uh, Ask our uh, equity policy, and I know that a lot of people, uh, you know, didn't had a chance to have the packet or read what that equity policy. I'm not going to attempt to read the entire equity policy, but I just want to read a brief part, which is really the purpose of the of the equity policy. And the, and it says the Washington Central Unified Union School District is dedicated to taking concrete actions to provide a safe and supportive and learning environment that is free of barriers one that affirms the identity of each of us and acknowledges and celebrates differences to create a sense of belonging for each person connected to our schools. The school district is committed to creating inclusive educational opportunities that are relevant both historically and culturally, addressing the impacts of bias, prejudice, and discrimination while building more opportunity for us to thrive. Our commitment is to the development of cultural humility and personal growth, that is best supported in a climate that respects differences and provides a sense of belonging and inclusion. So with that, as I said at the beginning, I hope that we can hold space for each other and find hope and courage and joy in the present and the future. And, and I think the entire board here is committed to making a, a impact that not just for today, but for the future of, uh, of our school and, and shaping um, and shaping the future for all our kids and board leadership uh, matters. So with that, uh, we're gonna use uh, tonight uh, a protocol that uh, our kids, and not our kids, <laughs> our adult uh, uh, teachers, uh, we have a class uh, every year and I actually should let either Natasha or Jen or, or Mike who took the class uh, talk a little bit about it. But every year, Shelly Vermilia, our equity scholar, uh, teaches a class at uh, U32, and it's a, it's basically a racial gender and the intersection of that with justice. And uh, and we have, last year, uh, we had several of our teachers take the class. Last year, I took the class. This year, we have uh, uh, both, uh, I believe, Maggie and Natasha are taking the class, and Jen. So we wanted, to, they developed this traditions protocol that we then adapted it in the memo that we sent to the board. And I was wondering either either of the two board members or Jen, if you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit of how you came up with this traditional protocol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we offer this class every year and we have a class legacy project 
I mean, it's actually what the, the, it was the Gen Specific Community and Justice Coalition all those years ago. That is an advisory, you know, obviously serving as, as an advisory in an advisory capacity. So this year, we happened to have class on Valentine's Day, and we weren't sure what our legacy project was going to be. And we had heard a bit about the, the tradition of carnations at, at high school. And a lot of us recall similar traditions in our schools and when we were growing up and how we felt. And that was really a catalyst for us thinking about all of the um, traditions and actions and uh, and sort of beloved things that have happened that may or may not be beloved by everybody. And as we continue to live into our humanity and justice commitment statement and continue to learn and grow as a school community and as a society at large, we wanted a way to just uh, establish a, a way to reflect through with an equity lens, pause and take stock of what we're doing, why we're doing it, analyze it through the lens of some equity questions that were the ones that uh, we use for our, our school uh, community uh, equity book groups for our staff and our faculty, uh, hear from students to hear what they had to say, and then have that inform our action so we can figure out uh, is, this, is this aligned with our values and are we going to continue it as is? Should we adapt uh, or ad uh, adapt or change parts of it to be in better alignment with our values or should we abandon it and look at something new? So it's by way of introduction, I'd offer that. And Maggie and Josh, do you want to fill in anything? We cracked it, <laughs> we chewed it, we, right? we, did, we did it over the course of, um, of February until May at the end of the class and then presented it very quickly to the leadership team for continued dialogue down the line. So, so what, what, I, what I did with you know, Megan and Carrie was like adapt this uh, tradition protocol so that we could have an equity lens that we could, so we could have like a blueprint. To, to look at uh, the decision that we have in front of us uh, tonight. So with, with that, we're gonna use this first part just to have a discussion uh, as, as a board, and then we're gonna move into public comments. So don't worry, you'll have a chance to, to comment. And after we have received the public comments, the board will will vote in any questions on the procedure or yeah, the yeah, process. Not hearing public comments. Um prevents the board from having the discussion about the public comments. Correct. Um, well, it's well, not a good thing. I think we should yeah. have discussion after the public comments, the board discussion after the public comments, because oh, then we're losing a piece of information that we don't otherwise have. Oh, and that's it. So sorry, maybe I made a confusion. We are, we're just gonna we're just gonna go through the through the protocol just quickly as a board. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna hear the comments from the public mm -hmm. and then we're going to move into into still more discussion. discussion yeah into more discussion and then we'll make the decision i, I think I the know. idea is that the traditions protocol will inform the board and the public of you know of how to use the equity lens and then we it's not like we're not gonna the idea is to use their input and the input that we have received and the input of the people that are not here right. I just, it, it's second Part of discussion was lost. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. But I didn't mean to do that. So uh, let's move into, uh, you know, we're going to ask uh, ourselves tonight, you know, then I'm just going to go one by one. We, we put it in there. So, you know, uh, we're the Raiders and the Knight. Uh, and we're going to ask ourselves today, what is the identity of U32 and what is the purpose of this mascot and, and name, right? I don't know if you guys had had a chance to think that through and if you have any comments, I can just keep going down and you fill your little table by yourselves, but I would love to hear some thoughts. <laughs> Otherwise I could keep moving. Speak up a little bit it's hard to hear. Okay, sure. sorry. Yeah, that's one of my pros and I was asking that at the beginning, but did you hear the beginning at least? Yeah. yeah. A, little no. a little bit. No. You can continue from okay. <laughs> Maybe just look that way. So, so, yeah, so I get I have to stand up mm -hmm. for right now and get a little closer. So we're gonna be asking ourselves what is the identity of you 32 and what is the purpose of this asset and wait, right? So I was wondering if the board members had some some thoughts in you know, what is the purpose and for what we've been learning, not just your thoughts, but what we've been learning from the kids or the conversations that we've been having. But I'm okay with, I'm, think, I'm okay with I silence. Think, and yeah, I'm okay. I think the board wants to hear from the public before okay. it opens. So then what I'll do is I'll just read and, it, you know, and I, 
you guys are going to be part of this. So then ask yourselves, and then judge the board for the public, ask yourself, is the name of the mascot free of buy? Right? I know that not everybody has the chance to have the packet. We try to put it. Um, does the mascot or the name deepen the relationships uh, with our students and among our students? This name or mascot activity disrupts systems of oppression. And I know that that is the hard one to, but you know, just have it on your mind. Uh, this name or mascot actively centers multiple perspectives and avoids marginalizing or oppressing others. Uh, and then again, what do the students have to say about this? And then consider the following. Well, you're giving us your testimony or your input. Which aspects of the existing name can ensure that the provision of the school branding that directly or indirectly references other characteristics, let's sorry, I have a type of it, references stereotypes uh, and like the features of symbols or traditions or characteristics that are specific to this name or branding might we keep as we actualize our commitment to humanity and justice. Sorry, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Which aspects of this branding might be tweaked or modified as we actualize our commitment to humanity and justice? And which aspects of this branding might be stopped or abandoned as we actualize our commitment to humanity and justice? And I know that this sounds redundant, but think about the students. Think about you know what we want our students to be. What what do we want our students to represent? What does it mean for our students? And after considering this questions, let's open it up to public comments. And. Uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to stick to the two minutes because I, I don't know how many of you can, have, can Can you guys raise your hand who's hoping to speak so that I have an idea of, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So, and, and then I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do that on, online too. So online, could you guys raise your hand if you're planning to speak? Your electronic hand? Your, yeah, your electronic hand or... The, um, yeah, because I don't see all of you. <laughs> what if we just have clarifying questions? Yeah, you can be part of that too. But if you have a clarifying question, by all means, George, ask your clarifying question. Now? Yeah, because think about you, well, I'm, I'm more interested in, in um, the research um, that you did within the student body. I'm interested in the research into the Raider's name. I'm interested in the board's thought of what a Raider is. I am interested in who's offended by this and why. So, so that that is sort of part of the public comment, and then I, we we can and we. Well, then, I, mean, I can I can have a, a better insight. And I can have better conversation regarding all of this once I know that information. George, we so went we through did. that in a previous meeting. We had an extensive presentation by the students. Right. That's that. But that, but that was before, and this is now. So we've gotten this far. So, yeah, exactly. if, if I may, yes. I think we, we received a student report, right, that showed that in very broad strokes, the students don't really care about the mascot at all. Well, that nobody yeah. really said no, that. No, no. Yeah, so wait, 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 wait. So, wait, so wait, so nobody, so nobody, so nobody, so nobody, so nobody, so nobody showed there's no, there's, 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 there's not a, 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 there's not a strong, there's not a strong opinion in favor of changing it. There's not a strong opinion that. It is offensive in, in any way. Yeah. And there didn't seem to be a strong opinion about the mascot at all. I believe there was a question like, does this represent you or does it improve your school spirit? And the answer was was not no. no. So so to, to answer a couple of those questions, I don't think anybody's offended. There, 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 there is a complaint was brought to us. And at that first meeting, when we heard from the students, there was a strong opinion on the board that the second part of the policy, that the mascot, that the, the branding, the Raider name, was in violation of the second part of the policy. There are two parts of the policy. Um, a, the race crease, so the, it is in, uh, the branding is in violation of the policy if A, the race, creed, color, national origin, sexual orientation, or gender identity of any person or group of persons that that represents. And the board found that it did not violate that. Okay. The second part of the policy is uh, uh, that it features the likenesses, the likeness features, symbols, traditions, or other characteristics that are specific to B, any person, group of persons, or organization associated with the repression of others. And when the board discussed that, we the, there was a straw poll taken, and the majority of the board found that the Raiders' name was inherently violent 
and that violent imagery indicated oppression. So that's what we're talking about. So number one, does it violate the policy? Do we and do we change the name? Right. So there's been a and and there's been a lot of conversation about that. And between that first meeting and now, a number of board members seem to have changed their position and no longer find, no longer believe that that necessarily violates that part of the policy. Thank you for that. So, so with that, just to even clarify more, we're we're gonna have you uh, do your, uh, you know, do your public comments, and then, but we're not gonna get in a back and forth with, but just for for clarity, it would be a conversation of the board. So, with that, I don't have uh, many hands up online. So, let's get started with with the public, and if you could like just stand in line one behind each other, and uh, you have two minutes, and we're gonna start a timer. Please introduce yourself. And then, and uh, and the timer will get started once you have introduced yourself. My name is Julia DeRosa. Um, when I was here with Land, um, I've had three children go through here in 1821 and last Friday. <laughs> um, and done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, first of all, um, thank you for joining us. But um, I, one thing I want to say is for for when you. I heard that you Raiders made you cringe. It made me very sad. Is I don't it, think that was floor. I think that was my colleague here. Was it Miss <laughs> Miss I, I did have your name on it, but I, my I apologies. It made okay. me very sad. If you could be in the car with the football team singing the windows down and Queen playing, and these teenage boys singing Queen at the top of their lungs, enjoying their time together, bringing them together. Oh, in the name of their school and their raiders and their their um, love for each other, the camaraderie. Um, to get things straight, what I understand, excuse my dad, with the raider name is that it was created, um, and people please feel free to correct me, uh, with uh, Paul Revere and the raiders who were fighting for freedom and for our liberties. And what better thing could we raiders fight for? What are our children doing with the pride flag and Black Lives Matter flag out there? These kids are redefining and hopefully washing away those, the negative parts of Raider. You know, and what a better use on a monetary standpoint, what a better use for our funds than putting hundreds of thousands of dollars into stripping floors and throwing up with uniforms than to re-educate people, you know, let them know this is what we fight for. This is what we stand for, not not violence, you know. And our children have been through enough. Please do not take this from them. My daughter, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter please don't take this from them. Thank you, Julia. They lost enough. The readers kept them. It was their hope for four years. Please. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Rob McClair. Um, I have a unique perspective on this and a lot of relationship with this institution. The day that this school opened up as a brand new school, I was a seventh grader. I was part of that group of students who selected the Raiders' name. I also sat where you folks sat for nine years. I was on the school board. I was part of the school board when we went through the expansion and renovation. My children graduated from this school. I was an athlete for this school. Both of my kids were athletes for the school. The other perspective that I had is I was in the Vermont legislature for eight years and we debated this particular piece of legislation that you're referring to. The Raider name has always been something to be proud of, to be aspired to. I find it troubling that somebody is taking a word that has been held in revere for so many years and now trying to make it something that it's not. It is something to be very proud of. I'm proud to be a Raider. You talk about the student survey. I've talked to several current students and they say the school board doesn't care what we think. They're not really asking us what we think. I don't know the process that you've gone through. But I will tell you, somebody from the outside looking in, it doesn't seem very inclusive. 
it doesn't seem very transparent and it seems very, very rushed. There's a lot of us who have had a lot of history with this institution and continue to and really care about it. But to move this thing as quickly as you're trying to move it, I think if you're still set on this course, you need to slow this thing down, get as much input as you can. This school has been around since 1971. There is a lot of us out there around the globe that are just now catching wind of what's going on here. But I would encourage you to not change the name. It is a name that has held inspiration and pride for thousands of us and hopefully thousands of us going forward. But thank you for your service. Again, I sat here for nine years. I understand what you're up against. But remember, you're representatives of the community not just a small faction who happens to be very vocal and very loud. Thank you. Good evening. I'm just going to start here. Board, I don't envy you at all. I didn't do any of this. <laughs> but I appreciate you getting us all the time to be here and voice our opinion. I will go over the two-minute mark. I feel that we sat here for two hours listening to what you have to do and do your jobs. You should at least give us the representation of the field what we have to say. I'm coming to you wearing four different Raider hats. I'm coming to you as a Raider taxpayer. So with this rebranding, should that happen, who's paying for it? You might say it's a small fraction of your tax bill. Well, that might be so. But when you start bringing in $125,000 just to replace uniforms, when right now our staff has walked out at the end of the year with no contracts for next year and you're still in negotiations. So it's kind of a slap in their face. Also, we were in a district that is shortage of paraeducators, special educators, custodial staff, and kitchen staff. And if there's anybody out there that works in the school system, you see we have due diligence to these children that require services every day. And they're not getting them. That's our job. Our job is not to change the name and create this. That money should be spent on jobs, trainings. Um, if there's any organization other that feels that's not as important, I fortunately invite you to go spend a day with me in the school. My job starts at nine o'clock at night and goes around the clock trying to find subs just for big staff. So I don't have to meet people. It's not because they're a raider, it's because their job is involved. I come to you as a district employee, and that's my part in this. I have not been a raider for very long, but I hold it through and in my heart. I also come to you as a raider parent. I myself was not a raider growing up. I wore and the colors and the mascot of a rival school, and I will hold that in my heart. But I have adopted the raiders, and I will hold that on the other side of my heart. My child is a raider. My husband is an alumni. People here that are Raiders are because their parents, or maybe even their grandparents were Raiders, or you're a child that grew up in this district and all you wanted to be was a Raider. My daughter couldn't wait to be a Raider. It has nothing to do with what the name stands for. It's just what they are. I come to you as a booster member. I know you're going to stop me in my time, but I think this is important. I'm just going to get the, just one minute. Can I? We had just three other people that were going to. So yeah. I, go ahead. Oh, they're way better than I am. Yeah. <laughs> I got this shirt. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there it is. Tonight, you told me that the Raider name will have to change. Us as boosters, we will launch whatever it is you want it to be, and we will stand by you because that is our job. But the boosters also have a concern. We have thousands of dollars sitting in the closet of apparel that we no longer can use. We have just clawed our way back from COVID in the last two years. Being and now you might be asking us to start over from nothing. And I don't think that seems very fair. When you finally, just so you know, I don't take the topic lightly. I don't want to bring in humor and sarcasm. But at the same token, at some point, this has to stop. Are you going to now tell the theater department that they can't break light and poor performance? A saying that has been provided good luck to them for over 100 years? At some point, where you draw the line. And if you look at the word raid, yes, you see the word hostile, surprise attack, invasion. But now look at the other side of the raid. The police raided the building and it got thousands of dollars in bulk from getting onto our streets. 
The house was raided and freed the child that had been held captive for years. They raided the apartment where the uh, weapons of mass destruction today he had stopped another school mass shooting. In 1863, Harriet Tubman led the operation that freed 700 slaves in the Kambahi Ferry Raid. So in some cases, raiders are heroes. When you walk into our gymnasium, what's the thing, first thing you see? It's the knight holding a shield. I'm not offended by a shield. To me, a shield is protection. You come into the Raider house, you're safe. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. Person. <laughs> 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 you got to understand that there was a very big rivalry. Never once in all of my years did I ever think that the Raiders were the president or negative. It was a sign of strength and diligence and passion. And we fought a lot, <laughs> you know, on the on the on the athletic team. Um, I just you need to really look at it from the positive side of things. Get out of the negative. Look at it from the positive side. Anybody else? Big porch. A one time surgeon. I did. <laughs> I remember you well. Seeing the inside of war stuff to learn. I'm going to go to the Two dicks. They knew to say that, yeah. They didn't want to say that raid to me has always meant something like my 44 year old son getting in the ice box <laughs> into the refrigerator <laughs> or a mascot being a good luck charm. The, the letter that was written from Rutland mentioned that mascot was a good luck charm. Christian University Tiger didn't uh, make much of a luck, good luck charm. Nor did Providence University prior good luck charm. So it boils down to the definition of this nice director down here deals with repression means one thing. I think most of us think of repression as hurting someone or or doing some damage. And we, a reader doesn't start out to repress something that you think it does. So I guess it boils down to all of the, your own definitions on how you're going to describe things. I hope when you make your decision, you make it clear to all of us why you consider repression in the way it is. We thank you all for all the work you do. Thank you, Dr. Because we don't have any more here uh, asking the public. Go ahead. Hi, my name is David Lorley. Um, he's my better half. <laughs> we raised three of our kids here, um, who live in alumni. Um, spent the last 10 years going to and from, and probably more than that, with our son starting middle school football or fifth grade football, and then um, coming through. And the pride that our children and our family has taken with the Raider name, being part of the Raider family, Raider Nation is so powerful. It's family. And it, it is family. I mean, I'm, when if I see the, our kids with their teammates, with their classmates in the atrium at the art events, um, you know, celebrating Pride Week, Black Lives Matter, they're not exclusive, they're inclusive. And inclusive also means being willing to think of maybe something that's maybe you see and feel something, a name is repressive. Well, others don't. And just because someone feels a certain way doesn't mean that that it's that it's the actual thing that's going on. I spent 25 years in the emergency department um, here at CDMC, and uh, most people when they come in, they're they're certain that whatever's going on with them is a life-threatening emergency. And and many times it is, but a lot of times it isn't. And they're very convinced that this is this is it. it this is really a bad thing that's going on. And they have to kind of get made aware that you know this this person over here is dying. This person needs this. This is a real thing, a real issue that's going on. And it's not always fun to hear that what they feel is an emergency really isn't. But 
that's kind of what ends up they have to learn that on their own. And a good friend of mine once said, you know, when when the only tool in your tool belt is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And if somebody is in the at part of their life is feeling like they have been repressed uh, in their own or their experiences, then but it, it doesn't mean that everyone else is trying to repress them or that everything you know, that a name is repressing individuals or the groups and the students don't feel that way. Thank you. I'm going to ask one more time online before the board moves into discussion. Oh, yes. Oh, what's the clarifying questions I was trying to get in before with George? But I really want to understand the question or what you're going to be voting on tonight. Is it to evaluate the name? Is it greater? Is it night? I'm still not clear on what really the question is going to be. And also, back to the student survey, I think you know, it wasn't strong one way or the other. And to Jody's point, when we look at our tax dollars at work as a community member and a parent of a reader, um, former MA alum as well. So this was um, always a big rival on the sports field, but certainly proud to be part of Raider Nation today. So I think we still need some clarification on what exactly you're trying to answer tonight and what that timeline would look like for, for our process um, if we decide to move forward. Um, but I hope that that's not the case. Thank you. I'm going to ask one more time online and then I'll move on to answering that question. Is that okay? There is okay. one person. One person. Yeah. Barbara. Oh, Barbara. I'd like to speak a little bit. Okay. All right. Barbara, if you can hear me, uh, please unmute yourself and introduce yourself and you have two minutes. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Barbara Lee. I'm Barbara, are you? Okay, I can keep watching so, it while you. Yeah, you yeah. Want. So, yep. so okay, two two things two things that I would like to to clarify. So we we had uh, a. I guess first we've been we we passed the policy and that's the reason we 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 are here. So it's a it's a conversation that we've been having for a while. But tonight uh, we put a sample motion in our in our packet, and I'm happy to to read it uh, to read to you. But I'll read the motion. But then I want to say the decision that we made. If if we decide to move forward, we would take a, a whole year and until we are done with our strategic planning before we move into knowing we would decide on what name or what what it is that uh, our students uh, our students now today in this current time find meaningful identify with and that would take you know we would have a meaningful process what that process is we don't know yet we would just be moving into it because after the strategic planning we would know more about our communities uh, second uh, i know the monetary part has been part of a lot of different people's testimony it's nothing that we need to do right away right it, we don't need to suddenly we have a schedule of how we move how we replace uniforms we can continue to be in that same schedule we don't need to replace the flooring at the gym today that could be part of history if that's why we decide we don't know what we're gonna decide so we don't need to spend one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars today to replace all the uniforms our uniforms are in a sequence we can replace the uniforms as we go so it's not that we're trying to erase what we happened before we're trying to respond and the question in front of the board today and the suggested motion was to vote up and down so it doesn't mean that that is what needs to happen i move to determine that after reviewing the raider mascot and associated imagery the board finds that well the raider has no history of discriminatory imagery it is found to be in violation of policy f2 because it directly or indirectly references or stereotypes the likeness features symbols traditions or other characteristics that are specific to any person group or person or organization associated with the repression of others and that's the same with the repression of others because the other one is that mouthful because it's part of our policy but associated with repression of others the board will ask the administration to engage in a thoughtful process of renaming ourselves with deep input from students this will occur after a strategic planning process so that's the question before us is that clarified a little bit 
What's in the policy that we think it's violating again? You're saying name. What the, policy that you wrote. the the name of the policy. It, the policy was F two, yeah. and and it was part of the it's, it was part of the packing the the packet. And I'm gonna. It, it's I'm gonna, 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 gonna clarify what do you think is violating? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're we're the the board is gonna be the board is gonna be discussing, and you you will hear that. In the, so I'm gonna ask one more time if there is any. Barbara or, is ready. Or oh, Barbara is ready. Okay, and then we'll move. Uh, Barbara, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Hold, hold on one sec. One, one sec. One sec. Uh, Can you hear Barbara? me now? Yes. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. One sec. Okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, it's uh, one minute. One minute. Let's see. Hello. Sorry, Dick. One second. One second. It, uh, one minute, Barbara. We're just uh, trying we're to just get the volume. Hearing you. Give me one moment here. Okay. Okay, try again, Barbara, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. I yes, can't hear you. I can't hear you. Yeah, go ahead, Barbara. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Barbara Karecki and I taught art at U32 for 30 years. And uh, it's interesting that um, about 25 years ago, the visual arts department raised this very question about the Raider and the night. Um, because we felt that perhaps it was not visually inclusive enough of all that U32 does. And so we suggested that um, the visual of the Raider and the visual of the night be enhanced with um, things like paintbrushes and books in the Raider's saddle. And rather than carrying a jouster, um, that the Raider might carry a musical instrument or have uh, a very benevolent and um, uh, well-accepted symbol on the Raider's jacket, like a heart. Um, this might make it a little um, more inclusive for, for everybody. Um, I think the Raider is an important symbol to U32, I would never want to change. I would never want to change it, but I think that U thirty two is so much more than than a knight or somebody on a horse, and I think that you can represent that visually by embellishing the raider. So that's what I have to say. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. You had a clarifying question, and then we're going to move into board discussion. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. The violation of the policy because of repression. Oppression. Yeah, oppression. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
or uniforms just because a couple of people no. are the squeaky wheel no. makes no sense. So <clears throat> I'm definitely very much not in favor of changing the magic. <laughs> So, uh, one more. Yeah, go ahead. My name is Bonnie Pollard Allen, and I've been a writer parent for 20 years. I have seven children who have, I have five who have gone through the school. I have two that are currently here, a senior and an eighth grader. Those two children love the writer name. They love what it represents. Like Julie said, it represents family. It represents all ages. It doesn't represent people standing on the outside. They love the fact that the school is so open and accepting. Well, every school has the, it, its issues. Um, my children don't feel like that. They don't feel like they're being heard with the mascot issue. I've spoken to both of them and their friends, baseball team, football team, softball team, hockey team. They're not being heard. They're not feeling like they're being heard. That's what I'm hearing from my children every night at the dinner table when we have this conversation over and over again. You know, they're their kids money isn't their worry but they're saying mom why are they spending $125,000 to change uniform Jody brought up a good point we do need more educators in the system we need more support we need more education for the educator so why not put that money somewhere else you know I just I feel sad that this is even an issue and why after 50 years you're all of a sudden deciding to change this when it seems like there are a few individuals. Why not change the policy to say, you know, take the policy. You all made the policy or somebody made the policy. Why not change the policy to reflect support of the Raiders instead of oppression and hatred and make it something positive? Because the kids, they'll always consider themselves you know, they've started to change their wording. Roll union. Well, what's a union? Yes. Somebody who's collaborative and together and represents one body. So why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you leave it for these kids? For the parents who've been here. My husband's a, an alumni. You know, so I, I just think it's foolish and it is a waste of, of everyone's time. Change the policy instead of the mascot. <laughs> Okay, so with that, we're going to close the discussion part, the, the community input, the public input, and we're going to move into board deliberation and discussion with the input that we uh, that we have received. So uh, a couple a couple of things, board members, just like take a breath. <laughs> it, you know, we can we we can do this, and I know change is hard. Change is is, is difficult. It, I, again, I'm going to repeat. You know, board leadership. It matters. We have received a lot of input from community members that are here with us. We have received input from community members that have sent to us the, uh, via email. And 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 tonight I ask us to sit here not just for ourselves, but think about somebody that is not able to be here in the room and that is not represented in this room. And with that hat, please, uh, I just open it to discussion. I don't want to micromanage how you want to start talking. I do want to address a couple of questions that were asked about the, the policy. The policy is in our in, in our district website. It, the policy was brought to us. Not in, We didn't write the policy. The, the policy was the legislature had a process where they uh, passed the agency of visitation to provide a policy. We, we approved this policy in, in last December. Yeah, last December, I'm like forgetting all my names. We had already started having this conversation, changing policy so that we have different outcomes is not something that we that we do as board members. We we have a policy and you know we we take responsibility of following a policy. So that answers that one quick question. And then the, the second part, I'm just gonna reintegrate again for the board members that we're not talking about money today, we're not talking about but like how we decide and how do we spend those resources is not uh, tied to this decision today. And I want us to have a clear separation of that. With that, uh, Jonas, I, do you want to do you want to get started? I'm gonna, I'd be happy to kick it off. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but wait, 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 hold motion up. first, and then discussion. No, no, no. no, 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 no we have to make a motion on. That was a sample. 
Yeah, I do, not, I do not want to make that motion yet. And in fact, I think that we need to talk about what the motion actually is. So. Yeah, and and that was just the, it was it was a sample to get the conversation to yeah. where the conversation started. We could have the the motion and change it, but I you know and 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 amend it so that we talk and discuss around the motion because that seems to incorporate all of the input that they had given us. So it's actually not a bad idea to have the motion and then change it as, as we need. I, I think this go into our discussion and then yeah. we'll talk about the motion later. Yeah. Okay. Because motion is a shoot you know, in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't okay. want a branch. I don't want to create a branch. Okay, go ahead. So I'm a huge sports fan, right? And we're here in New England, and I hope that all of us in this room, as people of good faith, right, our favorite team is a piece of red hosier, right? So <laughs> team names are what they are, right? And sports are what they are. Um I have paid a lot of attention to the name change sort of conversations and dialogue on the national level. I'm a Washington football team fan. I think the commanders is a terrible name. I think the Washington football team was better. Um, I have a bunch of friends who are Cleveland Guardians fans, formerly the Indians. Um, I grew up right next to Danville that used to be the Indians. Um, all of us followed what happened in Rutland with the Red Raiders, right? So before I get into our name, okay, it's I think we all need to acknowledge that the same arguments about tradition, about what those names mean, and 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 the resonance that they have for communities, all of those arguments were made for names that I hope that we can all agree were probably needed to be changed. It's not the name; it's the community. It's the school that's important. The name is a representation and a symbol, and that becomes really, really important, right? But it is the community. It is the school itself. It's not necessarily the name. Decades go by, and that's the tradition, right? But at the end of the day, like, the, you know, the people who love the Solons love the Solons, right? And are proud of that, just like us and our Raiders, right? Just like the Huskies and the Trojans. So a bit of history about how we got here. Nobody is trying to hammer in a wood screw or a lag bolt. There is not a cadre of people here who are angry and offended and want to change the name. The history that Floor gave is accurate. The state passed, the legislature passed the law. We adopted the model policy without changing it at all. A complaint, as part of the process outlined in the, in the law, a complaint was brought to us from outside here. We received the complaint and looked at it and found, the board has found, that the name is not discriminatory, it's not racist, right? It's not offensive to certain groups of people. But the second part of that policy gave us pause, right? That directly or indirectly the branding references or stereotypes the likeness features, symbols, traditions, or other characteristics that are specific to any person, group of persons, or organization associated with the repression of others. And that's what we focused on, associated with the repression of others. And I've received, we've received a lot of emails from a lot of really smart people going into detail about how a raider could be a good thing, right? And we heard, right, um, you know, raid the icebox, right? Or the raid on Harper's Ferry, right? That was done for reasons, right, to eliminate slavery, right? That's a good thing. I think that these are all missing the point. It's not about a specific raider's name. It's about a reading of the policy that in our first instance, and I also want to mention that we started talking about this months ago, we put off a decision for a number of meetings to give more people time to come in. We are not rushing this, right? We're, we've tried to take as much time as possible because as some of you, like, I don't think we want to be dealing with this. I don't think the board wants to be dealing with this. This is a distraction. It was brought to us. We are trying to play the hand that we are dealt, right? So in the reading of this policy that the, the majority of the board sort of gave us a straw poll thumbs up to, to me indicates that that reading would have, would say that any mascot or branding that references human violence against other humans would be against the policy. And I've gone through the list of high school team names in Vermont, and I'd like to read some of them that would be out of policy if that, if that reading prevailed. The Raiders, the Rebels, which is problematic for other reasons, um, 
the chief, the, the, the chieftains is problematic for other reasons. So is the colonels, the commodores, right? That is a, that's a military person, right? That involves violence. The crusaders, that's horribly problematic. Uh, the ghosts, which used to be the galloping ghosts featuring a man on a horse wearing a white sheet, right? I think there, there's a problem there. The golden horde, <laughs> right? That swept across the steppes from Central Asia, right? Murdering and pillaging along its way. That's repression. The golden knights, right? That certainly wasn't a, you know, a democratic, you know, pluralistic society. The knights were agents of the ruling order. The Indians, that's problematic. The kings, what does a king do? Being a king or a head of state necessarily involves the use of violence or oppression for your interests. The Lancers, the Marauders, you could, and these three are going to, are, it may upset people, but the Minutemen, Patriots, and Presidents all involve violence as well. The Royals, the Spartans kept slaves. The Trojans kept slaves. The Vikings we know to be violent. The Warriors. So I, the, the reading of the policy that the board indicated that it was in favor of two and a half months ago would, would seem to say that none of those names are okay. As a fan of sports teams, I don't like the idea that, by, that we are going to eliminate references to human violence in sports names. I think that tradition is too deep-seated. I think that there, it goes back like, you know, sports is, is sports is war by other means, right? That's how football got started in England, right? Towns fighting against each other instead of actually beating on each other. They played with this giant ball. Shrove tied football. It's fascinating stuff. I don't want to eliminate. There's the, it, it's not about the Raider name. It's about whether we think that this policy precludes us from having a mascot that references human violence. I think that's a very narrow reading. But I also think it, it makes sense, given the letter of the policy. I hope that there is a way for us to acknowledge that the name is in tension with the policy. I would also note that the policy also says the superintendent or designee shall uh, periodically review per our policy review cycle and provide recommendations for necessary updates to the non-discriminatory school branding policy as necessary. This policy was adopted. We did not alter it at all. The superintendent or designee has not gone through that policy review cycle and looked at this. I think an alternate action that we could take would be to direct the superintendent or designee to review the policy and see if we want to edit that clause that has caused so much controversy in a way that would not that would not preclude us from endorsing a mascot that does in some way reference human violence. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Uh, we're not making we're, we're, we're done. Thank you, Dick. It, we're we're not we're not gonna have a back and forth. It's we the public had his time. We're gonna we're gonna debate at the end of the meeting. If if there's still some comments, we'll take comments. But we in order to have a process and be able to make a decision, I apologize, Dick, but I hope that I was clear at the beginning that that's what we were doing. Uh, Maggie or Chris, did you have your hand up? No, no, no. Yeah. Maggie, do you want to go next? I don't want to put people on the spot or yeah, we're just going to go next, whatever. Yeah, I'll go. I'll be brief. <laughs> I just want to clarify I'm also a parent of 32 students and varsity letter children, adults, and teens now. Um, and my feelings about the name are personal. And I'm Certainly, someone who's very sensitive about language and is part of what I do professionally. Um, and it's been really helpful to have the past two months since we first discussed this in the board meeting, not the policy, but discussed um, our current situation with um, addressing the policy. Uh, it's been really helpful to receive emails and to have robust conversations with current students, including my own, who's here, um, and uh, with community members who attended school here and um, 
faculty. A lot of people are taking time to respond to this, um, which is super helpful as a representative. And that's um, something that I take very seriously is that I represent my community and my own personal feelings, whether I may cringe when I hear it because that's how it makes me feel, is that's that's my personal feeling. Um, but I do take seriously that I'm here to represent the, the will of the community. And I also um, uh, share Jonas's concern about the wording and um, how it puts us in this complicated position, not just <laughs> mascots, but I think a lot of um, language that we use in, in our schools. Um. I'm a St. John's very hilltopper. We top hills. <laughs> so that was very intense for me. I like that. Actually, uh, <laughs> topple. Um, I want to push back on something Flora said, which is that the economics aren't a consideration. For me, the economics are a consideration. Yeah. But I think. Fair. I think there's cost on both sides, and I also don't think it's the only factor. I yeah. think. There are costs to changing it that are real and imminent. I think there's also a strong case that a lawyer could make, maybe, that we're breaking the law if we ignore our policy, which was dictated by statute, and just walk in that direction from the law. So that's a risk, and it has it has probably real financial costs associated with it. Um, I think your point. Jonas is a good one that the war metaphor is pervasive in sports. I frankly would be okay if the war metaphor went its way. Um, but I do think the point's a good one that many, many mascots in the state would, would be in violation. Um, I guess I like the idea of, of changing the policy. Um, I don't think that I don't want to ignore the fact that real people could feel some, you know, some threat to their safety based on sort of a majority opinion that that we all want to be raiders and we all want to identify as raiders. I don't personally find that to make me unsafe. I don't. But I can't speak for others, and I want to just recognize that while those voices aren't here, as Ford said, they, they could well be out there. Um, but I I do think that the law as written, which led to this, if it had the same <laughs> language that our model policy had that we have then adopted, is a bad law. I think it probably is worth challenging if it is written that broadly because i don't think it's really in the spirit of what vermonters are looking for in terms of their school mascots um so i don't love our sample motion um i voted in favor in the straw poll of affirming that we were in violation of this of this policy i still think we're in violation of the policy that doesn't it doesn't follow for me that we should change the mascot. Um, and I sort of agree with what, what um, folks are saying, that let's look at the policy more closely. Hi, good evening. Um, Joshua Sevitz. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Um, I'll make it sort of sh short and quick as I can. I'm going to leave a lot of people here. Um, I think, as things stand now, the uh, the name Raiders is in violation of our policy. I wouldn't mind um, voting on this sample motion to change it. I think it's worthwhile to change it. Um, I based my decision as many of you have is talking to alums, talking to current students. Uh, we can all pull from our own sample communities and you know get different results. Um, I work on a job site with recent grads, you know, who, for example, said they don't understand Raiders. Like, why 
why do we need to do this and are also willing to decenter their own experience and examine their own bias unintended bias and trust that others in the community are not just stirring things up or not just hemming and hawing or pearl clutching at the name um this, as you know, it's been said, this is an issue that came to us outside of our board, even though we've been examining it for a while. It did, it came from an external source. Um, changing the policy, I don't know if that would take us out of jeopardy, legal jeopardy with the state. Um, everything is still up in the air in regards regards to how these things will be ironed out. Um, I would hate for this decision to be taken away from the board and be pitched to an attorney in the state office, um, which is, it, it could be possible that it could go that way. Um, part of the packet uh, that was sent out, um, and I thought this rubric that floor included was really helpful and great in boiling things down. So I'll just go through it and I'll share my results. It's four things. Is the name or mascot for your bias? Yes, no, not sure. Not sure. I, there's many dif uh, different opinions on that. Where I land, I'm not sure. Does this mascot or name deepen the relationships uh, with and among all students? Again, not true. Um, most students are not connected with the name. This name or mascot active uh, uh, mascot actively disrupts systems of oppression. It does not. Um, this name or mascot active actively centers multiple perspectives and avoids marginalizing or oppressing others, and it does not. Um, so again, I, if we were to vote on this motion today, I would, I would vote for the motion um, and look for other ways past our strategic planning process to come up with, um, with a new name. I don't know about mascot, but new name for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's where I fall. Thank you, Joshua. Mindy? Um, I I don't think it violates policy only because when you were talking about an attorney, this attorney or that attorney could read it either way they wanted to, in my opinion. Um, an organization associated with the profession of others. One thing we've got a mascot. That is not what the name is. <laughs> we got a knight, but we're called the Raiders. So we have that, that issue going on there. But uh, when I asked my children about it, who are both graduates, they they both said, I don't understand why it's a picture of a knight, but we're the Raiders. Uh, we never said anything about the knights, we're the Raiders. They didn't care about the picture. They're the Raiders. And I was thinking about, because this is going on in a lot of places, if we just decided that everyone had to have something safe, let's say flowers, well, then we'd be stomping on the daisies if it was a, a, a um, that's when you're thinking about these things, I think of it as athletics, even though it represents our school. So I personally don't think it violates. I was going through this. It's a name or mascot free of bias. Based on the history where it came from, there was no bias as far as what the kids and what I've had shared with me from people who were here. I wish so much my father-in-law were alive because he, he built this school, but um, he's not. So um, does it deepen relationships with and among all students? I don't think anyone either, any mascot would. Um, my kids know they're Raiders. One was an athlete, one was not, but he was very involved in um, theater, so he was a theater writer, um, and they probably did plays, and he would love to joust, and he did. Um, does it disrupt systems of oppression? I don't see it as oppressive. I, I just don't. 
So I, I'm on the side of not having a problem with the name. I went to school in Florida, of all places, but we were the scorpions and we stung. So even insects are violent. Um, but, I, you know, we get into the violence and it's, it's sports and the idea is to win. I'm sorry, but it is to win. And my husband's a Solon and I never knew what a Solon was, so I met him. Now I do. Um, so I, I don't know, but I don't think that it's repressing others to be a writer person. Um, thanks, thanks for everyone for coming and uh, for all the folks who sent in emails um, stating their opinions. Uh, the the word raiders, um, it's it's um, it's ambiguous um, because we heard about uh, the good raiders uh, and the bad raiders uh, in in terms of the actual <laughs> of the act. Uh, that ambigu ambiguity uh, I think creates problems for us in terms of the policy. Um, because are we good raiders, and if we're good raiders, then it's not an oppressive symbol. If we're bad raiders, then it is an oppressive symbol. Um, uh, so, um, you know, there, there uh, are times in history, like the raid on Entebbe, was that a good raid? Yes, it was a great raid. Um, <laughs> raid on the Ferry, same thing. But then there are the bad raids. Um, so, um, from, from that perspective, um, Depends on how you look at it, is whether it violates policy. Um, I really enjoyed Barbara's kind of comment mm -hmm. on talking about the mascot and enhancing what we want about uh, U32. Um, I appreciate the, the comments and the deep seated feeling connected to the name. I, I don't think I'll ever understand that from a personal standpoint, but it has a resonance and a connection and a symbol for folks. Um, who are joining me uh, in this enterprise that we call U32, which is multifaceted mm -hmm. and extensive and hopefully joining and, and helpful for everyone. Um, and I would, I think I would hope uh, that we could, um, John talked about trying to save the name in a way. Um, I don't think we should change the policy, but I think that's a, maybe a, an unsavory way out, you know, just change the words. Now I'm a lawyer, so I know how to change words to get the result we want, uh, which is not necessarily a, an authentic way or a, a direct way of doing it. Um, but I think what we, we potentially could do is if we want to emphasize the positive aspects of the Raider, um, we could change the name to something like Raiders for Justice and Humanity um, along the lines that Barbara talked about you know, the mascot with a new musical instrument or um, paintbrushes emphasizing what we value here or the pen. Um, did you say pen? Oh, pen. My pen. The sword. pen. Uh, right. Um, what we value here at U32, use the name, because the name certainly has a lot of cachet and resonance with, with folks that we've heard from, and I, I imagine even broader. Um, and, and so I, I think, and, and I'm with Daniel, I think the, the cost, um, but you know, the for social injustice, we have to bear costs, and we should recognize that, that uh, in order to write what has been wrong uh, in our history, and it's a good thing to write what has been wrong in our history, it'll cost us, and we should be willing to pay that price, um, because we wouldn't want to be in the position of those who were oppressed and say, oh, uh, too bad, move on, um, without trying to help. Uh, but I think we could do both um, by adjusting the reader name to and enhance the qualities that we want for it. So, but if it, but if it, uh, yes to no vote, I would vote to maintain the name as it is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea that just reminded me of uh, um, when my oldest uh, Simon was uh, young, he was watching a football game, and he said, Hey, Dad, come and watch with me. The, Oakland moderators are playing the uh, Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> um, so I've been on the school board for a while, and I'm hard pressed to think of a uh, subject that I'd less like to take up. <laughs> and, and partly because it's thorny, and mostly because it just, from my perspective, doesn't have much to do with our core mission of mm -hmm. getting young people ready for 
you know, like beyond Hutu. And, um, you know, bottom line, it's a symbol. And for a lot of us, it doesn't mean much as a symbol. You know, I went here, I played sports and my kids went here and played sports and it just doesn't come up. It doesn't have meaning for us. Um, I guess my favorite part of uh, tonight, maybe the whole process is just hearing from people how much it does mean. It, it has actually a lot of power for some people. Um, and it's interesting that, that, that the word and the concept of the Raider, but it's really about the, the community and, and, and the institution and the folks behind it. Um, I think it's really important that um, going back to the first meeting when we were hearing from the students there, we really haven't heard any evidence that anyone is harmed by, by the symbol. Um, I think that's really important. And yet the policy, to the way I read it, is clear enough. Um, raids and raiders and knights are associ associated with violence and not exclusively. But they are, and it's um, that to me that's unavoidable, and and so I I think that it violates our policy, and beyond that I think it's also problematic. And if not in 2023, at some point down the road, some school board is going to think about we need to change this because it's it's not ideal. Um, so I, I I would if it comes up I will vote to. Um, say that it violates the policy, we should change it, and we can look to change it after this. Thank you, Karis. If, Eric, if you can hear me, you're, you're next. Eric, I have sent you a message, but I don't know if you got it. Sorry, I am here. Just took me a second to unmute. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Um. Well, I want to thank all the input and everybody taking their time to, you know, their feelings and, and thoughts tonight. Um, it it is it is a hard decision to make. Um, you know, looking at the policy, you know, I agree with Jonah that you know it is uh, an interpretation of the law. Um, you know, and, and you could take it to an extreme that almost any name is going to have some sort of violent connotation to it. It is sports. Um, and there, there, the things that I kind of look at and with my decision tonight is, you know, community, what it means to the community, what it meant when it became, when it was chosen to be the mascot and the name. Um, you know, and for sometimes when, when things are kind of foggy with the law, you do look at intent and the intent was not mean. The intent was not, um, to oppress. The intent was positive. Um, so, and to look at it that way, I, 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 I couldn't vote against it and sorry, I had another thought. Um, I, I do, I, I really liked Barbara's suggestion on, you know, taking the name and the imagery to the next level, you know, to make it even more inclusive and representative of today's community, but without changing the history and tradition um, is something to look at, but to take it away completely, I, I could not vote for that tonight. Thank you, Eric. Hey, Ursula? So my position hasn't changed since we first started talking about this on the stroll poll. I felt that this word, our name, violated our policy. And I know that a large number of people glossed over the discriminatory language that it references um, groups of people who have been marginalized in the past. And we focused very much on the Raider name. And then there was a lot of very minutia discussion about what that Raider word meant. And that there are good aspects of Raider and bad aspects of Raider. And if I was gonna look at that and go, 
the bad kind of outweighs the good in that sense, because we will not be walking everywhere with our Raiders name to explain the intent behind it. So when we talk about equity and justice, we're talking about not the intent, but the impact of that work. And our work goes beyond these walls in this school. It goes beyond our neighboring towns when we play sports. When our kids do great, they're in the paper. Our name is national. So it's not just our state that is impacted by it. And I'm going to point out that part of the complaint that came to us was brought by the NCAA, NCAI, the National Congress of American Indians. Vermont has a 0 0.5 percent population of Native Americans. So we are not hearing from them. And that is why I'm going to try to amplify their voice. If I can, I don't want to speak for them. The NCAI started their mascot movement in 1968. Nobody's been rushing this. And in 2020, they started the initiative to address kindergarten through 12th grade schools. And our name, the Raiders, is linked to Native American names and titles. And as elected officials to this board, we are leaders in our community who get to be examples, be examples to our students of what we want. And this year we have concentrated so much on our three pillars, equity and justice, safe and healthy schools and academic achievement. And we have talked so much about how our health and safety schools and our equity and justice works impact our academic achievement as well. And I think that we can show how we make change. We, we look at that flexible mindset, right? We talk to our students about growth mindset. Our students are strong. Our students are outspoken and they, they make change. And that's something that I take away from it. I am really proud of the students at this school. One of our students spoke up at our last meeting and reminded us that it is not the intent, but the impact that matters. That is where harm can happen. And so I would be voting to with the motion to that it violates our policy. And I can say so much more, but I'm gonna stop. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for everyone who showed up tonight and for everyone who spoke and for the emails um, and communication that we got leading up to this meeting. Um, I am an alumni of this high school. I am a taxpayer in this community. My, my children go to the school. I was very excited to have my kids come and graduate from the same school that I graduated from because I have a lot of pride being AU32 alum. I was a three season athlete. I was editor of yearbook. I was part of stage 32. And the memories and the pride that I hold from that are because of the communities I was a part of, not because of a name that was associated with the mascot. Whether Raider stays or does not stay, it does not take away from the fact that I am a U32 alum and I had an amazing experience here. And now my kids get to go and be a part of this school and this community. They will still be U32 alumni. And whether they're Raiders or not, that will not take away from the fact that they are U32 alumni. Um, in terms of the policy, I looked up definitions of raid. I looked at definitions of raider. I looked at definitions of oppression. I looked at the synonyms for all of those. And based on that, I do think that the name raider is in violation of three of our policy. Um, so I will I will kind of stop with that. One other thing I do want to say is I heard people talk about community and this being a safe space. I will tell you as a member of this community that some of the responses that we got did me harm. I do not feel safe. Um, and I'm trying to separate my personal response from what my duty is as a school board member, which is why I go back to 
the definition of reader and doesn't violate this policy. But I do believe in the community and the pride of the school. And I don't think that we need the name reader to continue to be a proud, unified community. Um, and again, with some of the responses that we got, Honestly, I didn't even feel safe walking into this space tonight. Um, and it doesn't make me feel safe or out of my kids be in this community if that's what some of the responses are. Um, so, again, I'll just go back to the policy. <laughs> I think it violates 3D. Um, that's where I stand. Thank you, Natasha. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's see. I'm the King Claire. I'm the mom also. Parent of the most common seventh grader and second grader, Melissa. Um, my mother was a teacher here for my um, own years, so I basically grew up here even before I was a student. Um, this has been a really hard and interesting discussion, and I'm not sure it's, I'm, I'm not sure this is the appropriate, the, the board is the appropriate place to have this discussion, but it's been very interesting. Unlike Ursula, I have changed my mind more than once <laughs> during the course of this conversation. Um, I have a personal attachment uh, to this community and to being a reader. Um, so immediately I felt my own attachment to that. When we really delved into the policy and I read it very narrowly and thought very specifically more about the night imagery than the reader per se, but you know, read it very narrowly. I said at one meeting, yes, it does violate that. Um, but I think it's I, I think the policy isn't great. I think it's ambiguous. I think you have to read it narrowly to say that we are clearly in violation of it. Um, you have to see a narrow definition of the reader to fit a narrow part of the policy. Again, I think it's a great process for the school community or the district to go through intermittently to evaluate how we are how we're represented and, and what that means. Um, and have these really hard conversations. I I don't feel great about the 12 or 15 of us saying we need to get rid of the readers team because. If it if it were so crystal clear that it was discriminatory or uh, oppressive, <laughs> it matter if we looked at it, then yes, then we should get rid of it. We should pay whatever it's gonna cost to fix it. Um, but I don't but I don't feel it's that clear cut. So but I don't the policy. I don't think this should be the end of the discussion. I think that definitely. I love the ideas of kind of broadening or redeeming the mascots or uh, you know, in some way making it more inclusive. Um, but but I I don't I don't think it violates the policy. Was there any point any of us coming here tonight? It, at, at the end, but we it, we we had an opportunity for 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 comments, and then with the board is going to make a decision, and then if you want to comment after, there will be opportunity for comments after the board the board the, the board decision. I don't think any decision I, 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 has been I, I made that there's not even a motion. Yeah, there's a yeah. To clarify, to clarify. George, 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 George,
tonight and you know it, there's no there's no motion on the table there's no predetermined uh, as you can say as you can see the board has gone from uh proposal that the majority of the board wanted to change it to right now not looking like the majority of the board so just let the board do the work that it needs to do i want to answer two questions because i want whatever motion we put in front if we don't want to use the the motion that we had is that one thing to make clear is that we cannot change the policy the policy came to us because of act 152 act 152 was uh, an act related to not discriminatory school branding the act passed by the legislature had the exact language they act and they and and they tasked the Vermont school versus, uh, the, the Vermont schools to provide a uh, sorry uh, down here they tasked the agency of education in consultation with stakeholder groups including the Vermont School Bus Association should develop and form a timeline or create a model policy of non-discriminatory school branding so uh, there's no we can't change the language just to adapt it so, sorry Jonas I'll, I'm almost I'm, I'm almost done. So, so with that, if that wants to be a motion on the table, I, I'm as the chair, I'm gonna try to hold as best as I can I'm to the point that, you know, I get a little emotional. But I, I think that we have, well, one thing that we have to see here is that we have a great opportunity. I'm trying to think about the box set that we just did at East Montpelier, right? We had this conversation for years. We were doing, um, uh, for six years, we tried to pass this bond to upgrade our school, mm -hmm. and at the same time, try to have the conversation of changing the the mascot. But it was the road runners, and you would have thought that it was like the worst thing that it could ever happen. Mm -hmm. Two or three times was brought up, and 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 it was not able to happen. And then suddenly, two years ago or three years ago, Joe, you can correct me exactly. And it's brought the community together. It's brought the school district together. They have a new brand uh, mascot that the kids are completely invested. They named uh, one of their, uh, this year, one of the plows from the state, the, the Foxy, uh, Foxy Runner, I can't exactly remember, Orange. But it is, we have an opportunity for change and we have an opportunity to build. If you spend any time with the, the kids at the school, whether it is through any of the activities, the 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 need for belonging, the need for uh, for having a, a sense of belonging. For we had 171 students answer the, the the survey. That is not representative of the of the school community. And we had enough comments through the survey that said that it did not mean anything to them. And we had enough comments, even if it was just five of them, that then felt that it offended or it was oppressive. Think about who we are. It, it, the question to me is, is simpler than that. So we have to remove, we cannot change the policy. So whatever motion any of you want to bring forward, I'm all open to, to hear. And let's think of ourselves of how can we be agents of change? And I know that I keep saying that and I sound like a broken record, but it is today. How can we be current? How can we respond to what we're hearing from our students? And sure. Motion. I've got a question, a clarifying question about my name's Matt Allen. Um, you know, I'm alum. Um, graduated 30 years from, from, from this institution 30 years ago. I also was an athlete. I was a leader. You name it, I did. Father of seven kids, five of which have been through here. One's a senior, one's an eighth grade. All of them went to the baseball coach here. How many of these people poll? How many of these students poll are members of the athletic program? See themselves as players. I I have I have asked every single one of my players. I had 22 players on our middle school baseball team this year. I asked every single one of them what it meant to be a Raider. Every single one of them is quote unquote is stupid to change the name. They're Raiders. Why should, why would they want to be anything different? Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Board members. Floor, I, floor, I just want to note that there is a that the policy itself refers to up necessary updates to 
the non-discriminatory school branding policy. You, we may not be able to make that change tonight, right? Because changing a policy takes a long time, but the policy is mutable. But I think what she's talking about is the exact language in the statute. The statute. In the statute. So we can't it has to include that. Yes, yes, it's written right in the statute. It's, we can't create a policy that's in violation of statute. Right. We can make a we can make amendments to a policy. We can make it more restrictive than the statute. We can't make it less. So I think what Flora is just trying to say is this particular line that we are talking about is in the statute. We don't have the discretion to change that. Well, thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then well, it's being interpreted. Uh, uh, right. But let's say, let's policy. let's try let's try to have yes, a, this is discretion. the meeting of the board. I will I will ask you know, just really beg you for like you know like we're trying to model the best the best we can as citizens. Please let us know. We we had time for the public to speak. Let the board have a discussion. Thank you. Um, so we 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 are. So let's let's just stop this for a minute and just ask you to. Uh, so as we as as we move forward to this, even if we I've heard some comments also that we could uh, add. A, I, I was you know what Barbara was suggesting. Even in that case, it would mean like it's an opportunity for us. It would mean like we can re-examine the. The, the, the mascot, it would still mean that we will charge our group, but we would say that the policy is in violation, and then you can get the community's input in changing the name. And it, all of that addition or whatever we decide it is would come, would come from that. But I'm at this point in the meeting uh, looking for, for a motion. Um, I'll move uh, that we vote on whether we think the rate of the aim is in violation of our policy. Very simple motion. Okay. Okay. After second. any amendments to that? I, I need a Chris second. So, uh, Chris, uh, I just have moved to vote on whether the rate or name is in violation of our policy. Okay, everybody uh, heard that? About and associated imagery. Oh, I understand. Well, but that's no. fine. Then you have to, if you think one does and the other does not, that's a problem. I mean, we can have a separate motion um, on, on the imagery. But you have any joint motion? In, Are they not connected it's, it's, with the policy, though? It's yes. a but, they are, but, but you're talking about the word, the but it, it, it's the night. You know, you the, can't necessarily combine into that. The way that we've been discussing it is combined. The branding is combined, so we could even say the branding. the branding in violation of the policy. You can also say um, mascot or imagery, yeah. and that way you're the, the it's policy either one. Branding. Branding. Yeah, branding. It's school branding. branding. No, but it would be. I would like it as a one would be a violation. Well, but then so hold, hold your thought for a minute, Chris. I would like us to use some declarative language, not just do you think it violates the policy, like a yes or no. I think we need to say declaratively, I move that our school branding violates policy F2. Not the motion on the floor. So, well, no, okay. so no motion on the floor. We're discussing the motion. It, I mean, if the motion, uh, I, I think it would be clarifying for anybody who leads the motion to understand why. And that's why I think if, I, I think this sample motion does a good job at that, of calling out the language in the policy that we want that is being voted on specifically because it is something you want to hear. It is not so clear. I mean, it's like, it is, we are voting on whether or not it violates the policy. I don't know that we need all that wording. In yeah, I'm just saying, like, if there's a motion that's then reportable or able to be read by the public or yeah. posted in Front Porch Forum, it gives those who don't tend to check the minutes of a board meeting, a very long board meeting. Why. Declarative language is also far more inclusive and easily read by all members of the public. Yeah. Chris, are you okay if to remove your attempt of motion mm -hmm. right now? And just, or so if you want to make a motion, uh, since you have I'm, the paper and or Joshua. 
Uh, fight over it. <laughs> I move to determine that after reviewing the Raider mascot and school branding, the board finds that the policy is in violation, or that the branding is in violation of policy F2. Wait, can you say it again? Sorry, I that Sorry, I messed up. So I move to determine that after reviewing the Raider mascot and associated associated imagery or school branding, the board finds that the branding violates policy F2. Any amendments or a second? Would that include directly or indirectly references? It, it took, um, references. I took out the because. Because right. there are two points that it can be violated under. And I don't think we necessarily need to specify which one. I believe it also violates part A. And so are we, if we're voting on whether the imagery and the name are so let's have a second. Let's have a second on this one. No, second. second. Okay. So we're so that so entire discussion. It's a unitary image. The Raider name and the mascot are one thing. Um, that, that's, we should clarify that. We've seen them as a whole. The she did. She did. She did. She did. No, no, but you, but you also said that it's representing two separate things. No, no, no. Good. The policy. What do you mean? I referenced that no, it's no, two things. Referencing the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the mascot as two separate. The Raider mascot and associated imagery are branding. Like there's commas there. Right. I think what Chris is referring to is both parts A and B of the policy. No, parts A and B. That's why I did not include that's any right. text. I, yeah, I think that's what it's. I right. just said that we violate the policy. It is simple as that. So and people can make their decision on how it violates the policy or doesn't in their mind, whether it violates part A or part B or both. Chris, I suggested saying which part of the policy that it, it violates that we're voting on. And I, but then Ursula said, oh, well, in her, in her opinion, it could violate more than one part. So she suggested not including the language that in the sample. <laughs> That that's where the two parties come. So, so Lisa, just for clarification, Lisa, could you read the motion on the floor right now, please? Yeah. So the other motions were not seconded, so they're all just they're okay. yeah, yeah. So this, withdrawn. This, yeah. this last one, Ursula, Ursula moved that after reviewing the Raider mascot and associated imagery, comma, our branding, comma, the board finds that the branding violates policy F2. So does that include um, the sense that it's discriminatory? Yes, I believe it is. Okay, um, and we've already voted to think that we think it's not as a board. We just like to no, we never we took action, action on that. Formal action. Okay, so, so just so we're being clear then, we should say that it's discriminatory and oppressive, so it's clear to the public yeah, right. voting. I don't think it violates the policy. I don't know. Yes, uh, it's just violation of the policy, whether it's on A or B, it's just violation of the policy. Yeah, so if you don't you don't have to agree in A and B, it's okay. just that you do that on your head, and it's just... Yeah. And you have a seconded motion on the floor. So yeah. the only way that that would change is if you're making a friendly amendment and then and she would agree or not. Yeah. So I think. Yeah. Okay. So is it clear to the board members what they would be voting on? Let's repeat the motion before we do it. I second it. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Sorry. Second it. So. Is that one more time? Yeah. I just don't want to paraphrase After them. Viewing the Raider mascot and associated imagery, comma, our branding, comma, the board finds that the branding violates policy of two. Your question. So yeah. what follows from that? Um, or are we just not saying what follows from that? No. But if it, yeah, 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 I think what if it, if it doesn't. Pass, nothing falls. Right. Okay. Yeah, and if it passes, we'll have a discussion. But you know what was written in the package was you know after we we know our capacity and nothing will happen until we're done with strategic planning and a full process will we'll, we'll, if that's what happens. We'll but we don't, we'll we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, sorry. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So all the four MVP to be have online twenty board members. Just one, just Eric. Just Eric. Yeah, just Eric. And and then for 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 this one, I think it might be easier if we just raise the hands in, or could we just raise hands yeah. because I have Eric uh, online and just have uh, with would that work with board members? So, okay. Yeah. So all those in favor of the motion as proposed by Ursula, second by Kari, read by Lisa just a minute ago, please say aye. 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 So one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And then, do you have to do a roll call because you have one person online? Yeah, maybe let's just do a roll call. So, so yeah, that might be better. So Jonas? No. Mm. Yes. Maggie, yes. Uh, Daniel? No. Daniel? No. Yes. Joshua? Yes. No. Lindy? No. No. Chris? No. no. Curry? Yes. Yes. Ursula? Yes. Ursula? Yes. Natasha? Yes. Michaela? No. Um, Eric? Eric, are you still with us? No. no. Okay. Hi. I know that the chair don't don't always vote, but the chair votes yes. So, so that you don't have all members. Yeah. So we we have a tie because we don't have more yeah. members here with the with us. Guys, guys, and please. So. Yeah, I know. I don't. <laughs> I'm just trying to like it, you know. So, but throw it up again. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, what we're gonna have to do is just bring it up at our next meeting when we start the year, as uh, uh, when we would have full representation of uh, of our of our members. Oh, yeah. today. We have so we don't have to do Yeah. So we we have a we have a we have a tie. Jesus. Hey guys. Jesus. It, so you all heard the motion. It, we we have a tie. It's six to six. But we we are twelve today today here and there there's a tie to the motion that we carry. So as of today, the Raiders name say is we will pick up the, we we will pick up the question again next at our, our next board meeting. Which one? When, when do we know time location? That that won't be until uh, until our first meeting in August, which would be the third week of August. The sixteenth. The sixteenth. Mm -hmm. No, oh, that is the well, that's the third. Oh, oh, sorry. It's, I think we said it the twenty-third. They're not. Uh, yeah, we we don't have the date. So hold on a minute. But more information will be put forward. Okay. Four. So with that. Or yes. is it necessary that a motion that ties be reconsidered, or is that a choice that we're making? I think it's a choice. I think it's the choice. Is that a choice that the full board wants to make? That's a good point. Or, or is that a decision? So, so, so given that we have, a, I think, given that we have a tie, it's like, it, you know, it's just for best. It, given that we have a tie, it is best process for us to to have a to have a decision made by the board that is either up or down, not uh, you know, sort of like an easy, you know, like we're in the middle. I just I just don't feel like right now we are sending a signal one way or the other to the community. I know that they can see that it is a hard decision, right? Yeah. It is that it is a hard decision. We do not have the full representation of the board. One of our board members couldn't be with us today 
she was part of the hiring too. So we, we don't have to give the opportunity for the full board to be present. We, we haven't had the full, with all, all due respect. Yeah, that, I know. We haven't, respect, yeah. we haven't had the full board for years. Yeah. And the motion was not adopted. Uh, that that that's a signal. That's the way the parliamentary procedure works. Yeah. That's the way Robert's rules works. Thank you. I, guys, please. I can't tell you how frustrating it is. Thank you all for coming out. But this is a board meeting. Please cool it from the peanut gallery. Please. And we're the community. And, and we're the board. And we're trying to hold a meeting with the board. And we're interrupting all over. Yeah. So like, I think what we should do is like, and I'm sorry that I probably put everybody on, you know, it was my in inclination just to pick up the work always that, that our next meeting. So the strategic uh, committee will, you know, as we, as we know, we will decide <laughs> on the, the propose to the board as we work on our work plan on our retreat, when do we want to pick up this next? It, the policy anyways, uh, ask us to every couple of years, I believe, to re-look at our branding and our and our mascot. So it is something that we would be picking up again. When when the board has the retreat, we can decide what best we can do. And let's not make a decision. Don't put any dates in your calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and thank you. I just want to thank the community. I hope that you guys can be as engaged as you are today on our strategic planning. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you can participate in our focus plans and, 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 and really invest uh, yourselves in coming to our board meetings, right? Come to our board meetings, come to our board meetings, not just today, but come to our board meetings and engage in a conversation. This is really helpful for us mm -hmm. to know how the community is feeling and make sure that you bring the people that are not always at the table, okay? And then with that, let's move into... Just, just yeah, just, just one, one second, one second. So, uh, one green. Oh yeah. So yeah. So we're gonna allow public comments in this moment, and then we'll move in executive session. Go ahead. So we both with Minister and I am mortified that you receive those text messages. That is not what the most of our heart, and I will walk with you any day. If we're on the side of I will walk with you. If you are ever living, right. We are a community, not only the state, but the integrators in my heart. And we're very proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, we're, the board is going to move into executive session. <laughs> yeah. The board is going to move into executive session. So thank you all for coming.